One, there two, Freddy's coming for you. So there we go. Now it started. It took a second. OBS decided to be slow. Derp. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There the we go. Recording has started. Um, no, it hasn't. Yes, it has. Uh, no, it hasn't. Yes. That's a lie. Book will be no. with us once he's with us with the nephew stuff. So, uh, quick recap. Uh, you guys control a diplomatic envoy that includes some uh, mercenaries and other guardians for said diplomatic envoy. Uh, and you guys uh, have a rather uh, nice claim on a uh, kingdom hidden inside of pocket dimension. Uh, yeah. And sick kingdom. Yes. A kingdom in the loosest sense of the words, as it is a large plot of land, twice the size of Texas, that you guys uh, know the only way into it. And the person that was uh, technicality on the leadership uh, declared you guys in charge of the system. All right, so you just want one positive and one negative from each of us? You can put more in, but, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, if you don't put in, you know, two negatives after two positives, I'm only going to be able to use one of the positives. No, oh. Because no for every positive, there needs to be a negative one for the encounter stuff. And basically that's the same for the uh, groups. I was going to point out. And the negative doesn't necessarily need to be, oh, this is a bad thing about the group. It could just be, here's a complication you will have to deal with. No. Such as they're really attached to their homelands. So you're going to convince them to come here. Uh, things like that. So, getting to that, uh, you guys have basically concluded on three major options for who to go through for education. Uh, at this point, uh, Inquisitor, no, you can make me a intelligence check. Is that right? Yeah, intelligence. Make an intelligence save. Yeah. Yay. Who the heck is this? What? This image you're just showing to us now. That's the image that the others were commenting on earlier. That you ah. missed. I made visible. Alright, at least get to see it. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, intelligence oh. check. Nice. Uh, William, you also know of a fourth option that you could throw into Lushu that uh, is an option that you readily have with you because you guys want to do education first. You could, in fact, have your... Uh, you so could, you could very literally convince your diplomats to go into Lushu and integrate. Okay, so essentially uh, using Lushu as a base. Well, I mean, Lucia will be your base, but uh, no, what I was, what I'm, because you need to implement education. If you basically, uh -huh. you can basically uh, effectively feed your current unit of people, so most of your staff, all uh -huh. your diplomats and stuff, in, they can go in right now when it's only been a few hours since you guys last came in and start okay. the education stuff now. But you now don't have. You know your support staff, all the other stuff. Okay, so get the support staff, such as the ones that were frozen first, then get to it. it it's a matter of you can do this, but one you have to convince them too. It means that you can start working on uh, what you want to do next, economy, because you know they'll handle it. Yeah. But, okay, yeah. so I, I, I would uh, definitely tell them to prepare for that. Then. Keep dropping all over. I'm so, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely tell the support staff to prepare for uh, for us to end up uh, making our pathways for the education and the economy. Well, they wouldn't be economy; they would just be education. I I don't okay, Inquisitor. You have like a hundred people that work under you. What I'm saying is, you throw in basically ninety of them, so you're left with the ten guys that operate the ship. And 
you have those 90 people do the education thing rather than going to Us. the academy. Yeah. yeah. Well, not you guys personally. It would be all the people that are working for you. So your your personal little band of people would basically go from having might of two to might zero until your force is restocked because you don't have any soldiers. Uh, your ship would stay at territory one and your influence would tank down to zero for a bit because you have nobody to uh, send messages or do stuff because you only have the people that can handle your ship. I'm pointing out that it is an option that your character realizes. It it tanks what you guys have outside the portal for weeks, maybe months, but it lets you get started really, really quickly. All right, I've got three events. It's the best I can think of right now. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but that's a thing that the group has to decide together. So uh, you guys have set up and have made the three big suggestions. The Great Library of, at the Capitol, which is also a magical academy. Um, some artisans' guilds from around the country. And going east into Arcadia to get a druidic circle along with a awakened raccoon by the name of Boxcar Joe. Where did they come from? Where did they go? So, uh... Oh, let's start with the... Uh, boxcar Joe lives in an anachronistic boxcar. I can't get it out of my head now. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, we'll start with the basics. Uh, uh, po does anybody have a positive quality for Boxcar Joe and the Druids? What say it's the fuck? I think you should honestly just roll. Or choose one mm. that fits the best for the scenario. No, no, no. It's, not a, it's about you just guys. Just to tell them leave me alone. What do you mean a positive quality for Boxcar Joe? Okay, uh, for the education thing. Hey, Who, me? Yes. Um, I'm talking to my buds, man. Hmm. Th this is the things that I was talking about with, you know, you could define oh. that Box. We know for a fact Boxcar Joe is a chef. We know these details. So, yes. it's also an awakened animal, yes. and his the druidic circle would uh, be able to apply their knowledge of nature to help out the people in the uh, especially how to make food. You know, in my honest opinion, when it comes to the druids, when it comes to the druids, the, the, yes, the vil outlying villages would end up making use used to the druids, but I'm just going to have to end up saying... I think we can end up worrying about that probably second. I... I, I know exactly what sort of negative the druids are going to have. They're really druidic. They're super... Well, okay. So that's one positive, one negative for the druids. So oh, yeah. that will be interesting. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, Positive Stop. for the Artisans Guild. Nice. For the Artisans Guild, Guilds. they're very wealthy nobles. Like, almost exclusively. I mean, that, that's a good negative, actually, yes. That is, that is both the positive and the negative. They're really wealthy, snobby nobles. Yes, they have a lot of trade skills. The problem is, those are expensive trade skills. Yes. Okay. So, and now the Great Library, which is also a magic academy. Keep that in mind. Like, uh, it wouldn't make sense for a help. guild to be to be like that, dude. Go, go I can, we could end up saying they have revolutionary thoughts. That yes, they're good. That's that's one of the outlying things, but they don't they don't essentially like what is the traditional rule of status quo. That works. Uh, okay, uh, against the status quo. Okay, but yeah, uh, 
the great libraries and scholars. They need a positive and negative too. We can end up saying the pos a, po a positive one of them. They have great and uh, you know ancient c kinds of knowledge. Uh, positive that. They have great and powerful knowledge, some unknown to the rest of the world, but they guard their knowledge with a heavy price, and I have. They'd rather sacrifice mm -hmm. their own lives before give their knowledge. Uh, that's that, a bit that's, extreme. They're no? the best. No, they're the best option, but they're the hardest to. So Jib wants the is suggesting that the Great Library is secretive. <laughs> that really doesn't fit with there being a magic oh, academy, Jib. Yeah. They're they're an academy as well. You got to keep that in mind. The, the, well, then the, they're the, looking the, for the best of the dude. best. Ah, God damn it. Never mind. What were you going to suggest, Inquisitor? This is the point. It's supposed uh, to be the group suggests uh, ideas. Yes, I was going to quite simply end up suggesting that they like to experiment a bit too much at times. Perhaps they're all old. Once, you've, once you're a part of the academy, that you, you're in it until you either retire and find someone to take your place or you die. Mm. It's kind of mm. it's kind of a commitment. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll show some knowledge. I was gonna end up saying about their uh, wild and crazy and wacky experiments, but fine. Yeah. I mean, no, that that works, and because you guys are their mages, arcane might is one of their positives. Uh, so. And the druids, they have the fact that they're also magic, but they have the negative that they are literally a month away from you guys on land, which means you have to leave your boat behind. So, uh, those are your positives and negatives for the three groups you're looking at. Or you can try and convince your own men to go into a portal to live out the rest of their days in, uh, inside Lushu, inside that. Uh, mm, you know. I see no problems with this. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, what does it mean? Like, Artisans Guild against the status quo? They have revolutionary uh, ideas. They, they're against like, uh, like, uh, like meritocracy and down with the nobility and such. That, that's aristocracy. Mer hey, close enough. Meritocracy is a different thing. Meritocracy is about getting to your position by actually having the skill. Mm-hmm. That is against aristocracy. Yeah, but, yeah they're a meritocracy. Uh, yeah, mm. okay. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, so you got those three, and then you have the fourth option of uh, burning group. Speaking of which, uh, William, uh, a lot of your men have been approaching you and are asking about... Uh, what's going on, sir? What's going on? Uh, like, what happened uh, to the spider it, horses? Extra dimensional stuff, I'll just end up telling them. I will end up dealing with all, all this very, very soon. Just make sure the support staff gets things proper and ready for when we have to end up governing. I just like I just imagine the idea, but sir, we haven't done any governing in weeks. It's like there's <laughs> there's like ten, fifteen guys that are military, and then the support staff is like twenty five to fifty people, and then the other like sixty to seventy are all just philosophers, diplomats, and bureaucrats. <laughs> so it's like yes, get the support staff. Confused looks. Very confused looks. Uh, like what? The right, hell? right away, sir. <clears throat> yes. Okay. And yeah, they'll go pack up the camp they're sending back at the docks. 
to be ready to move. Yay! Yeah. It's an in-character discussion, guys. You have your <clears throat> four options, technically. Three if you don't want to feed your own men into the grinder. Why would we... <laughs> Why would we want to do that? Making because the job easier. It's literally the fastest. Yeah, but we're not savages or evil. But all in all, you're just another brick in the wall. If you throw me or my family in there, you will have hell we're itself. We're not throwing you or your family in there. I just sigh annoyed with the am going like, oh, if you're throwing my family in there. No, that's not what anybody's going to be saying. That's not what anybody's planning. I mean, I mean, unless your family wants to go in there, then sure, but we're not forcing anyone to go in there against their will. Exactly. So we shouldn't do that at all to begin with. We weren't even suggesting that. The GM was suggesting that, dude. Regardless. Like, we'll have our damn. family go in there and get frozen in magical ice. I mean, that's what's currently gone on. You're, the only family members that have gone in are nice, because they're the only ones that cannot leave. But to be fair, you know, you guys can leave. Mm-hmm. We can come and go as we please. <clears throat> but. There's no but. Yeah. I shall stay behind and learn the secrets of harvesting Stalrim. Stallroom. <laughs> Excuse me. It's magic Nord ice. All reference. This is you know this is serious talk. You gotta decide, guys. Which are you gonna pursue? Uh, All right, gang. We'll split up. Probably the harder one, considering it's more noble. Which one? The harder one, I said. But which one do you consider to be the harder one? I forget what was the second option. All I know is the first one. The, se the second option is the Artisan's Guild. I'd rather take the Druids. I mean, I'm still. Uh, I was going to end up suggesting mine as being some kind of inner circle of things, oh, being the opposite of the artisans. But fine. I mean, you have the mages. Yeah. You know. I was meaning as an economic standpoint of inner circle, but fine, fine, fine. Whatever you think. Economics is its own pillar. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Anyway, continue. Well, did you want to so go we... economics first, Inquisitor? Hello. Discord con I disconnected when I was trying to say something wonderful. Yeah. I was saying that the overall uh, thing I was suggesting was for economics. The group decided on education first. I know, but I was meeting my group later. Yeah. Yeah, well, that that will be discussed once you guys have done this. You know, I say uh, try to fo the focus choice. on what we're doing now. Then, then when we get to economics, then we'll do economic stuff and the economic connections. I think the druids right. may be the best because some yeah. druids live forever, and teaching the people about nature won't be the best. Druids still die, mate. Yes, yes. That's why I said some live forever. No. Oh. Then what's the point of no. not being a druid if you're going to die? Okay, I know. What's the point of not being a mage if you can just cast, <laughs> you know? Druids, um, you do, druids are in tune with nature. Death is a part of nature in of itself. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, to end up that's not why dying, is it? Some. That's all druids, then. Dude. God damn. 
Yeah, you know, it, it's not you know, it's not like they can't teach you know other people how to be druids if those other people are in tune with nature. They don't they don't actually have to live forever. They can you know they can train another generation of druids while passing on knowledge of nature. What did I walk into? Uh, it's a, a simple argument. The discussion of which faction to go for. So, I'm just saying druid because they can help mm -hmm. them actually learn how to manipulate the nature around them and actually feed and support themselves. And no one's arguing that. We're just arguing that, no, not some druids live forever. Indeed. None of them live forever because living forever is a is unnatural. Extremely so. Let's That's... move on. This seems like a point this a police argument. It yes. Is. Yeah. The, the, the Adriana just just blinks and raises her arm. Define <laughs> forever. This no like like no that that's a legitimate question i thought we were arguing this uh, out of character no no this no, is this is which is why this is all in. Doing a yeah. that, that's why that's why audrey anna is wait, raising her hand because she's there along with pelios but pelios is being quiet almost like he's finally getting a good night's fucking sleep after spending a year living in a pocket dimension he is mm. out like he was at war for half of a year and then spent another half having to deal with that. So this is the first good night sleep he's had in a while. And good being it's in a chair, still in his armor. Fun but it's friend. better. Uh, like, Adriana's just raising her hand. Like, define forever. Like, I mean, you can't, you know. Until they choose to, or until they're I slain. Mean, yeah, that that's the same. That's the same thing. All wizards can uh, can live forever just because one's a lich. That that's redundant. Or longevity yeah, but, potions, etc. But you know. Yeah, but even liches uh, uh, degrade over time into demi liches. Yeah. Magic can only sustain you for so yeah, long. That's the same thing with nature. That's actually technically an incorrect statement. Arch liches exist. Right, right, because we got to remember every single damn lich that has existed ever in existence. Gotcha. Uh, excuse me, Adriana says, crossing her arms at William and sticking out her tongue. It's been a stressful right, day. Right. Let's drop this topic altogether. Let's go in the portal and murder something. Now, come on. Excuse me? Uh, How does that help anyone? It shuts everybody up. Or at least people that matters. Anyway, into the portal we go. Okay. <laughs> You're just William's just going to go into the portal. No, I'm saying that to everybody. They Whoa. go in first before me. That's the that's usually how things go. Is anybody gonna go into the portal? Wait, why are we going into the portal? So that we can unfreeze our allies. You can't do that. Because they can't leave. They literally can't be unfrozen. It's attached to the very magic that's keeping Lucio in the pocket dimension. Uh, don't... Don't you, you remember? That is the entire point don't of Don't you why. remember, William? Like, it's a stressful to... day. Anyways... Back on topic. Before, well, before we get into an argument. So we're going with education. We have a group of suggestions, such as. I put in my two. But anyone else have an? You guys well, could put just do a vote. Yeah. That's fair. But so far, we have only two people's opinions. Nobody else really inter I mean, people point yeah, out their opinions against the, the But yeah, you guys could just do a vote so that you, you have, have other factions, potentially. Or 
enough people that's go true. over one faction, you guys can just say, well, that's what we're doing. I honestly don't know. You're waving fingers. I honestly I don't know. No Snores from Calvados. Don't really know any of them personally. None of us do. We only know them in passing. That's why you gotta choose one and bite the bullet based on which one bullet sounds the best. Uh, I'm just going to stick with my um, suggestion that our excellent guild. Uh, out of character. Do guns even exist in this? Yes. Yes, they okay. do. Which is very rare. All right. In River Moot, yes. It, it's, Anyways, the the Arson Guild. Oh, okay. The Arson Guild will so teach them how to craft and make tools, letting them get a jump start on farming and other crafts. Uh huh. Joe's voted for Artisan's Guild. Uh, yes. Luke, your vote. I still don't know. Okay. I right. think I think that the druids and would be a great uh, asset. Carwin's vote is for the druids. Uh, Leaf, your vote. The druidic nature path. Okay. And finally, uh, the Ignatius William. Which one are you voting for? Druids. Okay, that's three. okay. Now that's out of the way. How do we find these druids? Huh. Great question. I'd imagine they're in a forest somewhere. Yes, and thankfully for you, I know where they are. Go on. I'm all yours. <laughs> Hang on, I got Carwin, Carwin looks at the map. Yep. We all just look at each other. Uh -huh. right. Carwin points out on the map where they are. Yep. It's a month's That's... travel by foot. Wow. And if we take horses? So... You guys live on a boat. You don't have horses. <laughs> Why would you want to travel use? by boat? Now, now, now. Carowin's pretty well off, considering that her wife is a, a lawyer slash paladin. Yes, yes, which I is can... why you have one or two horses for your messengers, and they are delivering notes to people. Damn it! Fine, uh, let's go back to the city and get the everybody... that How much money does a damn horse cost? Is everybody forgetting about the noble? Uh, are you willing to put up the cash for the horses? Guys, guys. Yes. Weren't we here for a job? We were. Uh, also, oh yeah, good job. Uh, I think we should, we should deal with that first. I need, I need to, I need to, I need to, I need to save up and get some noise canceling headsets. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I was gonna point out, uh, the boat won't help you because if you look, you're on a river system. That boat's on a river system. Yes. And the druids are over here. Notice what does not connect them. River. Uh, I didn't see see that. Yeah. They're over here. Oh shit. Yeah. They. That's why it's a month away. They're. You're basically going to have to, you know, cross open plains or go north and rent a boat and then sail east. Uh, you know, all of which are options. But if you want to just rent horses for yourselves and do outrider stuff ahead, you could do that. But you have to basically leave your people behind. I have a option? Yes. Why don't we end up going to the city and end up going to get for a raven? A raven? Raven. A messenger bird? Yes. Do you already have done that? Carwin already did that. Then that's all we need to do. I think we have to go in prison. To discuss 
to discuss terms because I'm pretty sure the the Druids won't leave their forest. Agreed. Well, I guess uh, we'll know when the messenger bird returns, and if they re want us to come in person, then we'll go. All right. <laughs> well, I trained under Boxcar Joe. He can speak to them for me on my behalf. If that's not good enough, then I will meet them. Where did they come from? Where did they go? Just, just gonna point out there. That's waiting for one to two months. That would be what? Inside the portal. Uh, uh, I'll put that out. Uh, that would be over a thousand four hundred years. Fine. I say we just go. Yeah. It, this is one of those things where messengers are useful because it will give them a heads up that you're showing up. But you gotta go. If you're going to commit to this, you gotta go. Alright. So, I guess Carowin and Acela can... Or who, and who else wants... Or, wait, are we splitting up? Or are we all going to the druids? I assume we're all going to the druids. Yeah. I assumed we're all going. Yeah, And you guys can rent horses, but if you rent horses, that means the diplomats have to stay behind. Which means you can just have them go handle the bear any negotiations we'll and you can it's yeah. probably for the best that's yeah. up to William William as you're uh -huh. technically the commander are you going to have your employees of the diplomatic envoy that you uh, control uh, handle that dispute between those two barons I can tell them to put it on hold at best uh, at best at worst if they don't agree to anything yeah okay yeah so they'll they'll be doing that uh, I'll be asking for some rolls from William occasionally for that. Uh, uh -huh. Make those GM rolls, and uh, yeah, when they come up. Uh, well, anyways, honestly, I would have preferred to get the job at Dodge. Intelligence. intelligence or just straight D twenty rolls. Uh, that will. I'll ask. I'll tell you what they are each time. I just only want you and me to know, so the rest of the party doesn't. All right. So, well, I'm going to assume that your in that your campaign economics for purchasing or renting horses is different from uh, fifth editions. No, it's not. That's why you guys can all rent and buy horses, Spriggs. It's the fact that you have a hundred people that work under you guys that you would also have to buy horses if you want to take them with you. Thus, you have to leave them behind or go as just the party yourselves. I was going under the assumption that it would just be the party. I mean, that is also perfectly fine. That's what I was pointing out. Is that if you want to just be the party, you can just be the party, but that means you're leaving behind your... So, yeah. You guys can rent out horses. Uh, can I ride with someone? Because I can't have no ride skill. Fine. What's the worst that could happen? It throws me off, I break my neck on the fall. I mean, yeah. uh, I think I may be too big for a ride. You'll be fine. So we will also need a wagon. I ride with the wagon. Uh, yeah. Uh, so is everybody going to chip in for this? I'll chip in. Yeah, because you just need a good wagon. I don't even if know. We how don't, much gold if I we don't if we don't have enough we're gonna have to take an odd job. Alright, well a wagon would be thirty five I mean, gold. Assuming and, that's a base price. And uh, riding horse would be seventy five gold. And riding I mean, horses are fast horses. Yeah. So yeah, you guys need two running horses to pull the wagon at a fast rate for you guys to get there. That's uh, so that's 180. I've only got 10 gold. I only have 15. <laughs> William probably has more than enough. 
William has another 25, so you're at 50. I have 10. You're at 60. I have 10. You're at 70. So, uh, this is where we're gonna, uh, you guys can get the rest of the gold for this. I mean, I think we'd get more gold if we just finish what we were here to do in the first place. Uh-huh. Alright, so since I may have missed that part of the campaign, what were we here to do? This, uh, resolve a dispute between two noble families over, oh. over, over the docks. Two low-ranking nobles. Yeah, <laughs> Baron. Well, I'm no stranger to warring they nobles. Wait, now you could be killed them. William they, looks they, at you. They, I was no. resolving the dispute before these things came out. Oh, I love it. Just heal it Plus, they... I didn't think they were really, uh... Was fighting. What am I bickering? Now, yeah. you guys actually do have a way to pay for this. Uh, it's just that... This is just you know... Uh, you know, it's not like Toen stole a magical item from one of the nobles that's worth the gold you need. Oh, yeah, that... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Can I have it back? Um... Probably, no, probably that's for my daughter. Oh, what you... No. Uh, well, if that's, that's the case, then, then, that's I say that we should split up. The team that can actually go out into the field and do stuff, go do an odd job, and then the people that are good at talking to the rich folk can go finish that job. <laughs> I, w I will be it's... good at taking stuff from the rich folk. I'm pretty sure that will get us all killed. Yeah, so I you was will going be coming to... with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right back. Oh, <laughs> we're going. We're going to do some honest work. Ah, there's also the option of you know just asking the barons to float you their payment they're supposed to give you early. Yeah, but I'm quite sure uh, that, that they try that to swim. That never go do goes under well. Yeah, they're probably gonna try and swindle us to. They'll they'll probably do it through uh, interest on the loan. Right. No, I wasn't right. saying loan. I was saying ask for. And nobody's and nobody's wanting to end up asking it. You know, the actual noble here. Yeah, you would need to sell. Oh. you know the dagger. <clears throat> and he's gone. I think his thing was disconnecting but. or acting up. There we go. Welcome back. Welcome back. <sighs> yes, Carwin is not selling her daughter's new da new fighting dagger. Exactly. We can, we can get her a new one. What? <laughs> this is the new one. I I mean another one. Something that's more practical, reasonable. Less magic. Yeah, less magical. <laughs> you probably exactly. So, I mean, you're all there discussing this, and William is... Uh, Since you guys aren't asking for my help or wanting my input, I'm gonna go ah. get food. Wow. Why is he salty? Uh, Inquisitor's being a salty person. Yeah. Well, I mean, he only well, had 25 I mean, gold put into the pot. So, I mean, what else is there to discuss? I think he uh, meant uh, connections. I think that's what he meant. Well, I mean, he's perfectly free to throw out options. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, you know. They're... Selling the dagger is an option. It was brought up. Floating, getting a loan from the other nobles was an option. If no, he no, had an, an option, your he could have said something. An advance on your payment, not a loan. There's also, it... of course, uh, holding your company's pay. So, you know. Yeah, that's a bad idea. 
Yeah. That's a bad idea. Uh, again, yeah. I'm just pointing out those are options. That's a bad idea. I mean, yeah. I mean, I didn't say they were good options. I just said they're options. True. I mean, yeah, Inquisitor I mean, could ask for money from his family. Oh, man, this, thing, this campaign's going south really fast. <laughs> I well, I mean, you know, I mean, I've been there. I mean, you know, just kind of it's sitting only, around it's... waiting for people to address you instead of putting yourself out there. You just I mean, gotta put yourself if you, out if there. You're, yeah, yeah, you really do. If you're just going to sit around waiting for people to address you and playing Stellaris. and nothing and and nothing happens, really, the only person you have to blame is yourself because you have every opportunity to take initiative to you know put yourself out there, have an option, you know, per, uh, suggest something. And <laughs> don't forget, and playing Stellaris, don't. Ju- yeah, that too. Yeah, you yeah. know, just like how I really need to find out what caused that glitch. Sometimes when I get on World Twenty, that says I'm playing Minecraft. It's kind of funny, but at the same time, <laughs> it's also kind of annoying because it looks like I'm playing Minecraft in the Discord. It's like, yeah, no, I'm not. But Roll Twenty Minecraft, same difference. I don't. It's probably because dis- Java. That that's my only guess. Uh, it also did it sometimes with Map Tools uh, when I joined a Map Tools game. Uh, with some not so pleasant people, yay! Mm. But yeah, I mean, no. As far as doing like jobs to get some money, uh, that is also an option. The final option, besides renting horses, is you guys Walking. actually definitely have the gold, each of you individually, to buy yourselves tickets. You know, go north. You know, a day or two, rent a boat, <laughs> ride out an ocean boat. Yeah, go across the uh, northern sea. Or, it, or we can go to Windhelm and rent a wyvern. <laughs> I mean, if you want to rent a wyvern, that's Dragon's Reach. Oh, Dragon, yeah. Yeah, they literally, it's almost like they're kings of dragon. Makes sense that they have a bunch <laughs> of dragons working for them. But that's way over there. Yeah, that's also... Yeah, for reference, you know, it's, what, a two-week journey from where you guys are to the capital, and then it would be, you know, a little bit longer to get uh, to the capital of Dragon's Reach, but, you know... You know, it's... it's out of funny. character, that's the Dragon's Reach idea. Is a, Dragon's Reach is a uh, king is a dragon. Literally is a dragon. I'm not gonna lie, out of character, that's the smarter idea, but... Honestly, taking a wagon, f- like, opens the possibilities for more events and adventure. Yeah, rather sure. than, oh, no, a uh, what was your what was your question, Ninkin? Because we're paused, anyways. Um, basically. No, 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 uh, Ninkin. Did I have a question? Because you were asking about the king being a dragon at Dragon's Reach. No, I was. Uh, tr- I just wanted to confirm that that was yeah, it. Yeah, like, that's in common case knowledge. I was hearing something wrong. No, that, that's common knowledge. He killed the last king of Rivermoot because the last king of Rivermoot tried to attack him. Yeah, he doesn't like us. He correction. He doesn't like the last king of River Moot. He doesn't give a shit about you. Which is I, the good news is that he doesn't yeah, give a shit about you. If he gave a shit about you, you should be worried. Well if he likes me. You haven't met the, him. The only thing a dragon gives a shit about is treasure. I can be a treasure. <laughs> and if the <laughs> dragon takes interest in you, that means that you have enough treasure. To catch his attention. Uh, I mean, that, treasure. That's generic dragon stuff. Ringwall dragon. Oh, we, stuff. we we all know that dragons hoard treasure. I mean, yeah, yeah, all dragons hoard treasure. Yeah, in the case of the King of Dragons Reach treasure, it's the fucking kingdom. <laughs> because equity. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, you know, he's like, this is know, mine. It's- it's it's crazy when you really think about how different it is having ho- cars instead of horses, because where with horses this is like a month's travel time. If it were a car, it'd be maybe twenty seven hours. Days. Yeah, it, w- it would still be a quite a. It would still be no, like a- no. If this if this I, if this if this whole landmass is about equal, roughly. Or even slightly bigger than North America. Yeah, that yeah. would be roughly twenty-four to twenty-seven hours from where we are at Rivermoot 
over there to the forest. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're right in that. It's well, just the rough terrain would add more to it. But yeah, taking that into account, like, you know, getting from North Carolina to the Canadian border is uh, 12 to 24 hours driving. And, you know, with that in mind, you know, that's getting from there to there. When you think about the whole of North America and whatnot, you can start to really see that, yeah, that it's not that far when you have cars. Uh, yeah, but, magical but horses horse? are animals and they need to stop and rest yeah. and eat. Yeah. You know, you got, did you guys ever consider that maybe Fran was trying to say something, but you kept coning him off? That is a possibility. No, he, he wanted the party, he wanted us to ask him in. Yeah, he actually stated several times, why not ask the noble? Yeah, that's that is here. a factual... We did. That, is we a, did. that also they did, Lincoln. Um, random question, There have been times where he was two. trying to speak, but you guys kept cutting him off. No? Lincoln, you don't, you don't need to defend him. To uh, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not... It's not really something to get that bent out of shape over. We got a lot of people here who all ha who all have ideas or something to su suggest. You know, it's we're going to be stepping on toes. It's not something to be taken personally. Yeah, it's it's going to happen when you got a lot of people. Yeah, it, it's going. There's always going to be a little of that. You know, you got to work with it, make sure it doesn't happen that much. But a little bit of it's always going to happen, no matter what, even in a live group. And you know. I mean, I appreciate that he wanted his care people to ask in character, but you know, having William actually step up and say something, I think, would be the smart choice. William's supposed to be a socialite. I mean, I mean to he's... be fair, it would have also been uh, kind of logical to ask the nobleman for ideas on money too. That's so, the thing uh, we did. Yeah, but he's also he's also the party leader. No, you so, didn't. You never asked him. No, we did. They, I they, I did. Ninkin, I can they confirm did. you. I did. They did. I can pause the recording sure? and I can pause the recording and go back and listen to show you that yes, they did. Like that's fifty percent of what the recordings <laughs> are there for is for me for making sure I didn't miss anything, and you know generally saying things like please don't interrupt each other etc you know when people get talked over because that's like 50% of the reason why I do it uh, the other 50% is because it's fun to record a session because even if you don't have a huge audience viewing it or any audience viewing it, it's fun to just have it you know? may I ask my dumb little question now yes sure. what's your favorite positive encounter and favorite negative encounter without stating what the Oh, made. for me, of the ones you're yeah. rich of, uh, the I'm ones not, that we all, I, I haven't had a chance to read them all yet. That that's a that's the thing. Uh, don't worry about it. That I, I once I've had a chance to read them, and also book hasn't been put in any yet. So, uh, I I didn't uh, put, I didn't put too much thought into mine, so I really don't expect mine to come up as any kind of favorite. And Nikki hasn't put in any either, so I haven't. You know, one. Also, to be uh, fair, they don't have to be complicated. Again, literally, the thing I'm basing on is that uh, Z Basha's thing about Jimmy because I agree that's how I kind of like to do random encounters. It's literally you input as a GM up to four bad ones, or maybe three bad, or two bad, one neutral, one good, and then say to the players, that's what's in the pot. I made all of mine complicated. <laughs> oh, complicated is good, trust me. When, when eventually I run Red Market to everybody, it's going to be fucking hilarious because uh, I don't mind spoiling this. There's a there's a notoriously awful uh, random encounter in Red Markets called the Raccoon Leg. Uh, if you have the PDF, don't look at it. Don't look at it because it spoils it. But it starts with the party meeting a raccoon. And it goes down from there. It just sounds amazing. Yes, <clears throat> yes. That's the positive thing: is the party sees a raccoon. Can we ignore it? Yeah, yeah. You can ignore it, but the encounter goes from there, and it's it is one of the like 
it's notoriously compared to some of the crit fail ones, and the crit fail ones are bad. Your leg is now a raccoon. No, legs are how the uh, red markets handles uh, getting to a job site. Like you guys are hired to do this to get there. It's this many legs. It's which is roughly you know half a day to a full days of walking. Ah. Uh. Because it's you know the post apocalypse, so you know no real cars. Well, there are cars, but yeah, uh, most people are walking because cars are super expensive in the apocalypse. Uh, yeah, it it's notoriously dangerous because uh, it's got a lot of dangerous things like one of the crit fail ones, but it's also got a lot of positives like uh, one of the crit successes. Yeah, you know, I always find that funny with the the Fallout setting. You know, it's, it's really funny. You know, you go from oil based fuel to uh, fusion powered cars and then you still have to fork out uh, for coolant as fuel yep that so. was that was weird <laughs> it's just like was it really that much better you know ditching oil based fuel fallouts like that but yeah uh and also yeah book you have a thing as well to put in some encounters ladies but in, uh, try and put in uh, ready one. yeah I know yeah make sure to put in a positive and a negative uh Anyways, yeah, uh, I mean, Inquisitors certainly could, you know, call up family and stuff. There, there's a, there's a ton of options that you guys have, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, oh, part of it is, like, Inquisitor also has literally, you know, 50 to 75 diplomats whose entire job is to support him with legal matters and philosophers that are there for that. They're there because they're also there so when he's handling a trade dispute, he can have these guys just provide all the info. Because, yeah, keep in mind, you guys are might too. You have, like, 150 people in your company. Right, do I have a bunch of thieves working under me? I mean, technically what you have, uh, you probably wouldn't have a bunch of thieves working under you. But... Yeah, probably, like, just because uh, Carwin's, uh Goliath doesn't mean, you know, there's going to be Goliaths in the company. Yeah, like you have probably 10 or 20 guys that are the actual armed guards. Then you have the support crew, which are people that give out haircuts, Some probably some prostitutes that follow you guys around because they get money from the guys. Um, right, realistically speaking, our, our party would most likely be comprised of humans, dwarves, and half-elves. And a lot of halflings. River Moot is got a 20% halfling population. So there's a lot of halflings, actually. So I'm talking about 20% of the people here. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> then, you know, so you got that, you know, that contingent of the guys that are the guards and the security. Then you got, uh, you know, your companions and you guys, which make up about 10 people in the unit of 150. And then you got the, you know, uh, 50 to 75 philosophers, diplomats, scholars, etc. And then that other uh, 75, which are support people, people that set up tents, make food, all the stuff that, you know, people don't want to do, but needs to be done. There's at least one hairdresser. Which I go to every morning to get my hair done. There's at least two cooks besides Kerwin, who probably doesn't cook it herself, because you guys have zero treasure. Uh, you know things like that. Like it's it, it's a it's a unit. Sure it's, yeah, it's a we unit. Hunt, a we hunt our food. It's a contingent, and you know, the thing is, even and some of the scholars are definitely mages because you have might too. So even though some of the scholars aren't really, you know, soldiers, they can still throw out a thunder wave or a magic missile. You know. It's not an impressive number of magic users, but you know, you got a few there and here and there. You know. And that's why I was pointing out that technically, yeah, you could hold pay on a bunch of people, which would be really shitty, but it's an option. Because it comes down to what are you guys willing to do? And the current suggestion of uh, uh, either finishing the job or uh, 
getting uh that's that's honestly oh. why i say we split it like split the party just a little bit half the party takes an odd job the other half sits back and finishes the noble yeah talk. oh speaking of which uh yeah i mean to be fair I mean, that's part of the reason why you guys have the uh npcs they're literally there to uh is everyone okay in the background kids are playing i'm assuming and stuff Oh, okay. I thought somebody was being murdered. Come on, Jib. Just people being people. All right. Well, if there's any heavy lifting, or, you know, that kind of needs to be done, uh, Karen will do that. Yeah. I'm just you know, for the out. odd jobs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I was gonna point out that. Uh But well, I'm just going to point out. Do you guys want to do the odd jobs and get the money that way, or do you guys just want to take the boat? I don't really know. I kind of want to ask him. So well, I mean, about if, what he would want to suggest. I mean, well, to, to be to be fair. Okay. Well, we can ask him when he gets back. Uh, well, I mean, doing odd jobs would also have the added benefit that any extra money that we make can go towards the. Uh, yeah. That is also know, increasing our treasure. Yeah. But again, I want to. Say, I want to hear uh, what Fran, Fran's suggestions if we ask him in character. That's fair. Uh, yeah. And your friend, is just, Pelios, is just out of it. There, you're, he is gone from this world into the sleep-filled sleep that is sleep. Adriana is a no... Also... Also... No! Uh... Liches don't degrade. They, it's if they... Uh, that gets into... No, no they, they do. No, In, like, no, no as, there's two different ways that a lich becomes a demi-lich. Uh, the lich says, fuck maintaining this body. They put some power crystals into their skull, and they most of the time spend it in the astral plane after that, and the skull... Uh, is still as powerful as it was when they take over it, but otherwise it floats around doing its own stuff. That's the that's like what Axelrak is, you know, the guy that made the Tomb of Annihilation, where it's still a full-on terrifying spellcaster uh, when he actively needs to protect it, but otherwise it's yeah, just... Yeah, no, demi-liches, even just being a skull, are actually more powerful than a normal lich. Yeah, no, but, and then, and then there's the type of lich that you're referencing, the degrading one, which is, if a lich doesn't, uh, if a lich doesn't get to the demi-lich stage where it grows more powerful... Uh, because he's being he's lacking on his studies or other things, he goes and has the whole degrades and becomes a demi-lich without the crystals. And those are the ones that are just they have some of their magic power but are fucked up. There's there's like a dozen different lich types in D&D and like the arch lich which is divided into two categories. There's the arch liches that give up a bunch of magic power and then there's the arch liches that uh right despite the name a demi lich is not a lesser lich but rather a lich who is evolved beyond a need for its undead body yeah i know i know i know what it is i don't remember do druids become immune to aging or yeah yeah they they faster? get they get immune to aging they do okay Thus, so i'm not you are 100 percent right druids are quasi-immortal. In fact, that's one of the things is when they reach that stage, depending on the druid, they either just stop aging and then they just eventually die when they were supposed to die. Whatever that means. Some people argue that it's when they reach their the old age category they're supposed to die at. Others say it's when a certain time comes. You know, like a Jedi. The point being it's specifically nebulous because druids can just be thousands of years old and be a human druid. It, it's not forever, it's fucking ridiculously long, or even if it's not ridiculously long, it's uh, you know, staying in your prime, i.e. as a 20 year old physically, but being 90 mentally. You know, so all the benefits of wisdom from age without any of the uh, crippling frailties. Yeah, I'm glad I'm a, a rogue. I just steal stuff. I don't need to do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
as a gnome, you'll live for a long time too, Toen. Yes, I know what. I don't have to deal with all the magic stuff. I just yeah. see something shiny. I slip into my pocket. Yeah, like, oh yeah, I was. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's delightfully true, uh, and that's also its own fun little thing. Is you know. Uh, Oh, yay! I don't know why that was posted. That's a monster. Yes, it is. It's not something that you guys are going to encounter. Because... Today... I... Alright, so I was looking up Gibbering Orb, and for some reason that came up. It was like, that is not even remotely what I was looking up. Saved for later use in campaigns that I can... No! It's a Gibbering Doggo. No! Bad. Yeah. Uh, so, mad respect to the artists for the D and D monster guides because there are some pretty impressive uh, things in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, depending on how long it takes you guys, slash, uh, what William's plan is, uh, if you're doing any work around town or the docks, Carwin, you can make me an athletics check with advantage. Uh, uh, what? I would be on the. Uh, Odd jobs thing as well. Well, this uh, is just to get this done based on. I did not roll that with advantage. I mean, I don't think you're going to get the twenty, but you can still roll another check. You can toggle right. advantage. That's the best part. Okay, and what are, what are you doing, Jib? Uh, if we're rolling for like odd jobs, I would do an odd job as well. Yeah. Uh, this right, is so just I this rolled... is just for if like. Uh, I'm basically pointing out that if Inquisitor's plan takes a few days to do, or you guys decide to go with two odd jobs for getting the uh, horses, this is just to see how long it takes you guys to do those odd jobs. Uh, so it depends uh, on what you're trying to do. I'm going to do the good show on Earth. In, you know what? I'll just take the first roll. Yeah, I was going to say, just roll again. And Okay, now roll with advantage. You can toggle to the top of your sheet, guys. Uh, so yeah, book, uh, roll performance. And what are you doing, Jib? Uh, whatever uh, job that... Uh, okay, so. one more. You can care for horses. So roll All right, animal handling. I can... With uh, advantage or without? Yes, with advantage. I find it funny I rolled better, you know, without the advantage. <laughs> well, <laughs> Meanwhile... You look at mine. That's basically how things go for me. It's either beyond low or Jesus Christ. Yep. I so, hit average. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? Jib, look at your 21 and look at mine. Yay. 13 plus 8, <laughs> 18 plus <laughs> 3. <laughs> Numbers swapped. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Wait, how do you have a plus A? What are you? They have expertise in athletics. Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ninkin? I'm doing the greatest show on earth. What about you, Ninkin? What are you doing? Uh, what? What are you doing, Ninkin? Uh, I'll be right back. If the if the group decides to go with the doing the odd job, what would Luke do? Um, uh, I suppose really, something he would sell his mm, So I guess t tending animals would be the be would be the most likely thing he would do. No, no, clearly you're just gonna sell your body. You're just gonna be like, ah, here's an organ for little Timmy. Here's <laughs> okay, an organ yeah, that was in for bad Billy. And all of this for a cigarette. <laughs> Here's one of my lungs for Carl. No, no, stop, stop. Okay, roll me an animal handling with advantage. As the, as you as Leaf and Luke spend time together, animal handling. If this happens, bonding uh. together in the stables. The romance Ooh, music swells. My mm, Out of my house. No, my ding ding dong. <laughs> the farm girls are just they just they're just hoping that's gonna happen and every time they see the two come in together and then they're just they're just like aww. <laughs> oh my god, that's Nina from Bates. God damn it. 
Like, 20. what are you crying about? Well, hey, I mean, you got a 20 on your animal handling. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, yeah. Uh, what? I'm going to... Uh, Rick, Luke asks William what his plan is. Thoughts? I am back. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Get out of my house. Welcome uh, back. No. I think we need to remember the most important thing of all, guys. Yes. Gentleman wheezing. Yeah. Yeah. It is beautiful. I Doug love it. Dimmadome, home of the Dimsdale Dimmadome. <laughs> Doug Dimmadome. Owner of the Doug's uh, Dimsdale so Dimmadome. I find that hilarious. Where, is this, where did this come from? This is Galarian wheezing. Well, why? Uh, it's dapper wheezing. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Apparently not. this wheezing actually cleans the pollution from the air. Because wheezing and coughing hunt prey by spewing poison. But in Galar... At some point, the pollution was so heavy that it didn't matter. So, the wheezing and coughings realized that if they wanted to still hunt, they needed to get rid of the pollution. So they started sucking it up. Uh, oh. And thus, they purified the pollution. Thus, creating their new appearance. Which, they suck up pollution and produce clean air. But they can still spit pollution at people if they need to. Thus, they're a poison fairy type, which is awesome both mechanically and as a narrative reason for the things. And it looks cool because it's got a combination of this gentleman English look along with these old steel smokestacks and top hats. Yeah, if I ever catch one, I'm going to call it sure coughing. Yeah. No, it's Doug Dimmadome. No, stop. Stop, 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 No. And yeah, that's not a 10-gallon hat. Yeah, that's I don't not, think that there is are enough spaces to fit that name. Yeah. Also, meanwhile, Zigzagoon Lanoon. Can you post an image of that? I haven't actually seen it yet. The Zigzagoon one? Yeah. Uh, it's just rather than being uh, brown and tan, it's white and black with star shapes on its eyes. Yeah, Basically, it's kind of like think of evolution. It looks like yeah. Kiss. I know, I'd still would like to see an image anyway, because it apparently also has a third evolution now. Yeah, its third evolution is even more Kiss themed. Which gets really funny because Kiss is an American band, but it's supposed to be a reference to metal and whatnot being from uh, England. But they chose a American metal band. Link regardless. Okay. Well, Kiss is legendary. Yeah, I mean, it's true. But they could have gone with, like, Black Sabbath. They could have. But they didn't. Here. Uh, I can't watch the Led Zeppelin. Well, they, they probably went with Kiss just because the themes for the band members could be applied to Pokemon. Whereas someone like, well, something like Black Sabbath doesn't... Oh, yeah, no, 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 I, I understand. The I, Beatles. No, no, they're trying to go with metal. Not rock. I prefer rock. I mean, you're not... I prefer rock, too, but the thing is they were going with a specific theme. And also, the, we don't want to go with the original boy band. Also, there you go. That's what that's what he looks like now. I like it. I know. It is adorable, and I love it. <laughs> Ziggy, oh, well, no. oh, yeah, they could have gone with Ziggy Stardust. Yeah. Everybody's favorite. Except he's not metal. <laughs> Again, they were going with a metal theme. <laughs> so, you know, I... The thing is, David Bowie transcends genres. Well, no, yeah, yeah, David I Bowie. Don't show, uh, they right. don't show the... Uh, they don't show the Galarian line. Even. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's supposed to be the mother. And the thing is that makes it great is just... Uh, it's based on... it's. I meant in band. general, not uh, just in this comic. Yeah. 
they show the images on the site, just like they have that new dragon steel type they introduced. Oh, the thing that looks like a match? Or a lighter, not a match? No. It doesn't look like a match or a lighter. Alright, um, I'll okay, be right back. Okay, can you back. post it then? Because I haven't seen anything. I've only seen, like, the murder crow thing, the new sheep. Wooloo. What else have I seen? Yeah, Wooloo. There's the, there's a coal Pokemon that's basically rock and roll slash Geodude, except rather than it being a, it's a ball with a headpiece on a wheel that rolls around. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, uh... Uh, they also introduced a new Pokemon that has a hungry mode. That is not a joke. That's what it. That's what that's it's this re That's this um, region's uh, Pikachu. It's the Pikachu going for the region. Yeah. It it yeah. It's an electric dark type. That signature move is electric type. While it's normal. But when it's hungry, it becomes dark type, which I kind of love as a theme. Because it's got a move that changes type depending on its mood. Also, I hate but love it. It's called hungry. Yeah. But there's Gossifleur and Eldegloss, which are two new grass types. Yamper, which is just, of course, they made a Corgi Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, Dreadnaw, which is an alligator snapping turtle, which is kind of weird. For England, uh, there's more Peko, Obstagoon. The one that uh, strikes me, like I get the like Al Creamy. That actually makes sense considering uh, creams with uh, compared to France and England. Like a lot of France's great inventions are pretty much England took something that France was hating on and then made it really good and then the French are like oh we are the ones that make that stuff therefore it's ours that's pretty much you know that's how champagne became so worldwide renowned is because the English fucking love champagne and the French hated it with apparently a passion apparently there's impildim 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 I don't know. Yeah, but Duraldon, yeah, kind of, I guess you could see, kind of looks like a lighter. But yeah, it's this weird metal mech dragon thing. Uh, also, Galarian Weezing is fucking huge. It's 910. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, that's hilarious. I mean, that's just how big the fucking hat is. I'm gonna dim stay out in the dark. <laughs> Doug Dimmadome, owner of the Dimsdale Dimmadome. But you know, I I do like all the variants we're getting based on both region and themes for England. It's doing it very well. Uh, the the whole uh, Dynamax thing is kind of meh. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the most important thing to come out of this was a Scottish trainer. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, no. The most important thing of all was Yamper, the Corky Pokemon. Because now we can do uh, a Pokemon game where I have the Queen battle you. But why? Because she sends her Yamper out. She's right. a champion. Yeah. Also, Team Yell is one of the bad guy teams. One? Well, I'm. we're hoping there's a second bad guy team. There may not be, but, you know, there's a team literally called Team Yell, and they're fanboys. They're not soccer hoogums? No. They're, they're, dude, they're wearing, <laughs> they're wearing face paint with large things and they're holding up a poster of a woman specifically one of your rivals 
They are 100% fanboys for uh, Marnie. They're hot for one of your rivals, is what I'm saying. I I feel rather they've been um, what do you call that? Second who glimpse. FBI open. No, because they're trying to go with the theme of you know, teenage rebellion and rock and roll stuff. You know, it's just like how Team Skull is based on teenage rebellion themes for Hawaii. Actually, that's why yes. they, that's why you know because the common stereotype in Hawaii, which comes from its uh, integration with Japan, is that hoodlums hang around squatting in places. That's literally where that comes from. Mixed with the rap scene, etc. Alright. Yes. I well, just asked a uh, friend how long it's going to be, and he said he he ended up uh, going... His family ended up going to Chick-fil-A. So, we may have to continue without him. Yeah. Alright, so... That would have been nice of him to tell us. Just... It would have been, but I guess he was a little too salty. Yeah. that That's a good... Oh. oh. So, you guys are telling him to speak louder when he's... when his dad is asleep? Okay. Okay, one, we don't know that. Two, it's not about speaking louder. It's about speaking up in the first place. Three, Ninkin, you don't need to get angry for him and defend him. We were making a point that if he was going to be away for so much longer, it would have been nice to tell. Just like it's nice to say before a session, you know, generally a few days in advance if you're not going to be there. You know, unless something comes up last minute that you couldn't uh, account for. Yeah, God, I know all too much what it's like to have something come up last minute. Yeah, like, if I know I'm not going to be around on Wednesday, anyway. I'm going to tell you guys. Anyway, let's drop the subject and let's continue. Yeah, anyways, okay. Uh, you guys... Can I go pee real quick? Because it just came out. So, give me yeah, a okay, second. Okay, let's see. Uh... Yeah, since we're all burping. Oh, that's fine. Right. Okay, let's see. Let's look at your gold. Okay, uh, helping out in the stables. Uh, doing that work. Uh, Toen putting on a magic show. Hey, yeah. it's good honest work. Okay, so that's five, four. four. So, uh, are we still? Uh, uh, okay, are we getting the uh, you the uh, job we came here to do originally done? I mean, that's what your diplomats are doing. Yeah. Uh, that that that's part of the reason they're there is basically. So you guys can do actual adventurer stuff, in part, unless William wants to personally handle it, and yeah. So, plus this is this is gonna take a while. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so right. the okay, it takes two days. So yeah, two days in, you guys have generated the money you need, so you guys can begin the journey. All right then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> luckily, with horses, carriages, and the fact that you guys know a good path, and the birds ahead of you, uh, and there's messenger delivering it, so you know it's constantly moving. Because that's you know, you know, he goes out, he gives it to another guy, that guy starts going out, uh, you know, and they're going twice as fast as normal people. So yay! Uh, yeah. So hey, uh, it's going to be a nice uh, journey. Uh, all in the wagon, you guys head out. Dun da da, dun da da da. Who wants? I'm in the wagon. Yeah. Who wants? Uh, to I think uh, Luke is going to be driving the wagon. Honestly. Okay, Luke's driving the wagon. Uh, yeah, so the five of you are there, Will's in the back, so is the giant. Uh, the other person that's good at driving the wagon, so you guys can continue relatively easily, is uh, Leaf. So Leaf and Luke are up front. Uh, you totally don't hear s squeals from the girls that were watching you guys while you were working the stables. 
Oh my god, it's full of Ninas. Did I get any fans? Uh, no. <laughs> you got no new fans. Uh. <laughs> and then here comes Carolyn. I was like, I've got the horses, she says, literally carrying two horses. That's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, um, uh, it's gonna be, a uh, about two week journey. Uh, so, you guys, uh, who wants to make me a D100 roll? I will. Let's see how bad my luck is in this game. Okay, Tony. Oh, God. Yeah, Book's making the D100 roll for you guys. That book's going to screw us all. Well, it's only a PTK. <laughs> 96. Book. Book. It's only a PG game. <laughs> book. That hasn't stopped me before. Silly. Congratul book. Congratulations, Book. TPK. Book. <laughs> Yes. Rocks fall, everybody dies. It's all your <laughs> fault, Book. It's all your fault. Where is that one? Hold on to that I cast Magic Missile in Darkness itself. No, no. Don't worry. I uh, search for hidden walls. It's, you're, okay, you realize that you're in a wagon. <laughs> I search for hidden walls. Hey, don't worry, guys. It's nothing too bad. Uh, <laughs> it's just... Uh... A demoness comes out. Looks so, so, so. Oh, wrong world. My bad. Book, high or low? Uh, low. Okay, roll me a d20. Don't worry, Book. You're not killing the party yet. Ten. That that is low, in fact. Uh, isn't that good? You didn't murder the party by accident. Yay! Now, which of these things is the worst for you guys to deal with? Oh, actually, uh, okay. Don't worry about it. I am worried. It's only death itself. Oh no, it's not death itself. That's silly. Death's only got like 20 AC. Um, Sorry, that's just a bad 5e yeah, joke. Uh, yeah. As you guys are traveling along, you encounter. Uh -huh. You encounter the most formidable and odd creature as you're crossing over a bridge. At the I other end of the bridge, um, about three days into your journey, is a cyclops. Hi! What? There is a cyclops sitting on the other side of the bridge. He's looking at all of you. Uh, is it, does it look friendly? Uh, it's a cyclops. It, does, it could have intelligence enough to be friendly. <laughs> I'm, that is in fact true. A cyclops could have intelligence enough to be friendly. <laughs> Hold on. Well. I'll handle this. Wait, I want to show you the magic trick. Bye, guys. Well, yes, Luke. What were you gonna say? Uh, this gonna. Um. Never mind. Yeah, the cyclops is just standing there. It seems to be confused, and as you guys approach, it's just staring confused at you. Uh, yeah. Okay, go say hello. I yeah, watch okay. up. The swellest person in the group goes up to the cyclops and offers a hand. Hello. The cyclops puts a finger on your head, patting it. Uh, can can you step to the side so we can get across? Uh. He speaks a language you don't understand, Toen. Uh, does Kerwin understand what he's saying? Yes, you understand giant. Alright. Uh, Kerwin gets out of the wagon and uh, comes up from uh, behind Toen's like, let me handle this friend. 
Okay. <laughs> what seems to be the problem? Uh, uh, hmm. Bad. Burr. He, he just kind of confusedly mutters stuff. Uh, it's mostly just nonsense about, uh, where am I? You're here. Who are you? Is this, uh, I think this is my bridge now. Ah, is that so? Well, is there something we can help you with, friend? You seem to be a bit confused. Uh, uh, that he, he gives you a look. Are you implying something? Not at all. Just wondering if there's something we can help you with. Puts down the club. Cheese. Uh, Cheese. Cheese can help me with it. Cheese. Blake? Uh, oh, did you say that in common or in giant? Uh, he's speaking giant. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> that's why Carowin's being the mediator. He's still petting yeah. Towin. Yes. I'm going to pull on her. Where was you she wearing? You are very small. You must yes. be a teenager still to Carwin. Is this <laughs> little brother or son? I'll uh, just get to nod. <laughs> he is a friend. Ah. A very small and uh, adorable friend. I'm just going to smile. Can I eat? Uh, you cannot eat. However, you said you would needed cheese. Yes. If you'll give me a second, I'll check and see if we have some. Uh, Carolyn goes over to the uh, wagon and goes to the ration, see if they have any cheese. He's currently picking up Towin. Uh, um, um... <laughs> Don't struggle so much. I, she said in common. I do my best to stay calm. You are you are very close to a giant's eye as he sniffs you. This is, just, uh, this is not cheese. I reach back, grab a ration of breaded cheese and offer it. He sniffs it. I think that's cheese. I think. Yes, yeah. there's bread. I mean, food. Food. He, he will very, very carefully uh, lick the cheese out of your hand. Yes. So you get licked by a Cyclops, Towin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't squirm around so much. He licked me! He licked me! <laughs> well, if you squirm around anymore, he might be tempted to eat you. I stop moving. Do I find cheese in the wagon? Uh, no. Cheese is expensive. I, yeah. I, I bought some because I had the gold. Yes. I love how he's always getting picked on. It's hilarious. <laughs> Poor Towin. Uh, Towin, Towin, he yes, pats yes. you in it. Thank you. Me no cheese tastes like now. Okay. I just nod. I, I put to the side so we can get past. And hope you could see down. Uh, he drops you down, yes. Uh, Towin, make me an acrobatics check. My acrobatics... And Carwin, you can make a persuasion with advantage. Because he's been given cheese. Alright. Uh, normal or advantage? Nope, normal acrobatics. I, I he's just kind of letting you go absentmindedly because he's a cyclops. I... Ah. I do a flip and land on my feet. I take a bow. <laughs> can I re-roll? Uh, yes, you can spend your inspiration to re-roll. Alright. You keep your advantage. There you go. 18. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
you watch as he goes, uh, uh, and he kind of goes around the bridge, and you guys go past as he kind of wanders off. Uh, village that way must have cheese, then. They smelled like that. They had little ones like that. So, I've, this Cyclops is going to go on or off looking for cheese for some reason. I am okay. going to call it to the uh, wagon and shake myself dry. <laughs> Do we uh, have a raven? Uh, what the raven? Is that, uh, c ain't that concerning? Um, uh, I would think we should send a message back to the town, letting them know that the Cyclops is friendly and only wants cheese. Yeah, you can send a raven. Yeah, uh, right. to, is that, to answer your question, uh, yeah, Cyclopses are mildly concerning. They're, you know, they're mostly monstrous, but... Uh, it depends. One lone Cyclops is mostly harmless, because if they're alone, that means they're looking for something, generally. This one's looking for cheese for some reason. Alright, well, Karen will send a raven to the town it's heading towards to let them know that the Cyclops is friendly and only wants cheese. Yeah. He and it speaks giant. Well, that's Let, That's why she's letting them know ahead of time, because since they likely won't understand him, they might get scared and attack. The odd thing is that it's just, it's in a very odd place for this, you know, 20 foot tall creature to be because they're usually found north of the mountains. Yeah, that's the odd thing. Yeah, the, the location, less the, you know. On the plus side, hey, you didn't eat Toen. Yeah. Or put Toen in a cage. Really a plus side? Yes. <laughs> I'll scare you. <laughs> I had the cheese. I know, I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the road again? Yeah, it actually went rather well. You guys handled it without freaking out at the Cyclops. Okay, uh, and Toen, uh, yes. since you're the designated luck roll for the first leg of the journey, you can make <laughs> me another D100 roll. I regret everything. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Toen, it takes several days to clean your clothes of the Cyclops um, spittle. Some of it crusts on in places that are uncomfortable and you want to clean it when you're alone. No. River, river, it get, needs to be cleaned. <laughs> There's also no river nearby, which is the worst part. No. Uh, luckily, you have changes of clothes, so that's the good news. Yeah. But it takes, you know, you got to wait for the clothes to dry. And, you know, on the plus side... Uh, it's a Cyclops, so, uh, it, you know, there was only one or two maggots in that. <laughs> it wasn't, it was a non-pleasant experience. It was warm and moist. Yes, a day in, a, a couple of days into the journey, we discovered that we did, we failed to get in, we failed to get rations with our wagon and horses. I got rations. Huh? Yay! And then... And then Toen dies of dysentery. Yeah. Why? 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 What Toen? Well, Toen needs to get dysentery, obviously. <laughs> they might die of hunting you all. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Luke didn't do anything to you. So you guys are now uh, another, you know, two three days later, and you guys encounter a child. They're wandering around. Uh, I Oh, uh, like, Luke, uh, man, hold on. Hold on. Go on. Go on. Um, uh, I would, um, hello. try to, oh, God. Uh, uh, what, are you, what are you doing out, out here in this neck of the woods? I'm lost. Hi, mister. I'm Wait, lost. Wait, I think I have a toy. I'm Sandy, she waves. She's wearing a pretty little dress. She's very confused. Uh, she's definitely a half elf. Oh. Oh, Can I adopt her? I'm Luke. Hi, Luke. I'm oh. Cohen. Do you know where you where you live? Luke, why oh. does Cohen look like an old man? <laughs> Wait, how does she know? Carolyn just comes up. He's known as Old Kid. 
I know we don't oh, have the name. Mommy How and Daddy you, were telling the truth. I, if the fairies take you, they make you look old, but you're still young. I'm only 21. <laughs> old, but still young. Uh, he doesn't. He don't look that old. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, do, do you know where... Do you know where... Do you know where you live? Uh, yes. I I live in a I live in a big house, uh, near town, but the town's not nearby. I'm lost and I don't know which way is back home. I think it's uh, east. She's heading west. Yes, I do. Hmm. Uh, do you tell you what? I'll make you a so what does Tell you what, what, well, what does your mommy and daddy do, little one? Uh, mommy uh, is okay. A... Sure, interrupt me. Uh, sorry, it's chat delay. Mommy's a tailor. Don't need to get upset about anything that happens. But yeah, what were you gonna ask her? All right. Uh, t tell you what, we can. We're, we're we were already heading east. We can, we'll see if we can find your, and find where you live, where you live on the way. Okay, Mister, that sounds like fun. She hops up onto the wagon. If I may ask, though, your your comment about the fairies making you old. May I ask, what was all the? Uh, it's a. It's a superstition, in all honesty. Don't really know if it's true or not. Most, uh... Most parents kind of tell that to their kids so that they'll, uh, sneak out at night. No, I saw it happen. They, you know... Iggy went out one day, and then he came back, and he had a beard. Well... Uh... Well, I mean... Boys at a certain age just get. It's not uh, just something you get once you get into your thirties or forties. No, I got mine when I was ten. Uh, can That's I... so weird. Okay. Can I? Can I roll to see if the child's actually a child or a fae? Uh, yeah, you can roll me an insight check. Because... Uh, you can roll an insight, Toen. Normal roll. Six, Toen. I believe this is a child. Toen, you are firmly under the assumption that this is a child. I'm going to give her a toy I made. One of the tops. She is <laughs> happy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, little one, she says, picking up the little half-elf girl. How about the best view in the house, she says, setting her on her shoulder. I can see everything up here. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. you know, uh, about two days later, heading east still, uh, you guys, she's like, oh, I know that bridge, I know that bridge. And... Uh, takes you a few hours out of your day, but you guys get to a uh, large estate uh, that even has a garden of all things, and it's pretty and it's nice. Put the, uh, uh, what's in the, uh, the and after the some, the oh, uh, yeah. where where are we on the map at this point? Yeah. Oh, uh, so again, it's you know uh, to get over to where you guys are going. It's uh, since you're on horses and stuff, that's a nice. Thankfully, only two-week journey. So you guys are uh, about here where William is. And, you, oh. you guys are getting to the border where Arcadia and uh, River Mood are. So you guys are encountering um, a fair few small forts and stuff. Towin is basically where you guys are going. All right, so basically, go. so basically, we're just traveling through a lot of plains and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's some sparse forests and some streams every now and then, but yeah. 
It's also cold. Uh, even though it's, you know, one of the, you know, uh, it's the, it's those windswept plains, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, as they, appro I guess as they approach the manor, uh, Karen will get out of the wagon with the little girl and it's like, hello, I believe that you are missing a young girl. Uh, there is, uh, a shock gasp and that I... A uh, tall elven woman grabs the girl from you. There you are, and, and just basically hugs her. Uh, Wait. She's she's gone quiet, just just softly hugging her child. Uh, and that's cute. Yeah. Uh, and a gentleman, probably in his forties, maybe fifties, uh, comes down and is like, "Oh, what is it?" Oh. And then he pauses, realizes, "Ah, uh, ew." It's probably been a few days, so they've been worried, uh, considering that none of them look like they've had some good sleep for a bit. Uh, That'll be he, fine. He, he pauses, goes over to a side area, and comes over to you, Carwin, and hands you a bag, and then hugs you. <laughs> Carwin just kind of kneels down and get, returns the hug. Yeah. I... I understand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Don't mention it. I'm just glad that I could return your little girl to you. It is very appreciated. Now, I am concerned, however. She was quite a ways away. Um, have you had any issues with children disappearing in the area? Uh, that's the thing. Uh... Uh, she got near the teleportation score, uh, circle we're setting up in the uh, patio on the second floor. Ah. Which means little Missy. Uh, uh oh. He looks to his daughter. Guess what? Guess who's getting magic lessons? And she claps happily. <laughs> Carwin, sm Carwin just smiles. Well, I am certainly pleased that there's nothing truly dangerous going on. Yeah. <laughs> she just accidentally <laughs> triggered a teleportation circle. A lot. <laughs> Leaf just makes the Leaf just whispers. Well, you should. Parents. Leaf just whispers to you, Rope. My parents were that. that <laughs> were this strict. I wish I had parents. Toa just Toa just cries. Okay. Uh, I'm not jealous. Shut up. The Goliath may roll me a D3. Oh. Me? D3. Karwin may roll a D3. Three. Okay. Uh, the bag holds uh, five gold pieces and three potions of healing. Thank you. You are very generous. It's the I, least we could do. I'm not jealous. I, I certainly understand. Yes. You've got a very talented little girl, and I hope she—I hope her the best in her in her uh, magical training. Thank you. And you, little miss, she says, uh, going over to the little elven girl. <laughs> Try to stay out of trouble. <laughs> I promise nothing. <laughs> Just the way it should be. <laughs> <laughs> she 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 just gently strokes the girl's hair. Uh, <laughs> children. <laughs> the man laughs. Well, indeed. Uh, Enjoy the toy. Uh, uh, it's just uh, a lovely uh, little scene. So yay, Toen, you got the party a good event. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. FBI, Toe. open up. Congratulations, and luckily that also. Burn the third event you would have had to roll. So who wants to take over for the second leg, rolling the luck Shall check? Okay, Jib. Does anybody or does someone else want to take the luck check? Huh? Uh, all right, I can if uh, you guys want. You can alternate. So okay, uh, Ninkin, you can roll the the second luck check. Oh, okay. Uh, 
So let's see. Uh, yay! You guys are... Oh, right. I should probably update my equipment. Yeah, you have three potions of healing. And five more gold. You know what share with us? No. <laughs> healing potions and gold will be distributed as needed. Carwin is okay. not greedy. It right. is also only five gold. True. Yes, and three healing potions. Yes. I'm going to remove a uh, um, ration from my thingy. Yeah, I'll make sure you spend rations. Oh, uh, that is incorrect. There you go. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, you need to go to bed, little boy. Yeah, so as you guys are traveling around, uh, Luke and Leaf, you guys are monitoring the thing. This is probably another two, maybe three days later. You guys encounter a band of hobgoblins discussing. Uh, they, well, they're hobgoblins, so the very first thing is they uh, have that, you know, uh, large uh, appearance that, you know, uh, hobgoblins do because of their mixed orcish and goblin descent. Uh, about two or three of them are more of the orange hued. There's, uh, uh, you know, and then there's two that are uh, more of that weird uh, blue-gray that hobgoblins are. And it's the last three that take the most to realize that they're hobgoblins, but they are in fact because they have the elf-like ears that hobgoblins have. Because uh, they're green. Green-gray. Hmm. And they seem to have set up a camp, and you don't know if they're hostile or not. They're hobgoblins, uh, but they're discussing amongst themselves. Does anyone speak goblin? Uh, uh, I guess we can go see if they. <laughs> I guess we can go see if they're friendly. I mean, is that goblin slayer? Stop. <laughs> well, you'll be fine. They're just top goblins. Only eight of them. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Everything. <laughs> Carewood can speak goblin if those goblins are giants. We call those giant goblins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that counts. <laughs> Are you saying Karen can't Dang. speak to goblins? If she knows the language. Uh, as long as those goblins are giant. Yeah. Uh, Luke, uh, yeah, you see these, the hobgoblins as they look up as you guys are approaching. Oh, Lord. Uh, they kind of give you a confused look as uh, they... Uh, Talk no. uh, amongst themselves. Does anybody here speak Goblin? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm I checking. Don't think so. uh, after a moment, they one of them speaks in uh, common. Uh, speak. Hi. Nope. None yeah. of those. Yes. Um. Why did we stop? We could just pass by. Oh, oh, the oh, the Goblins can speak common. Yeah. Yes, they can. They're Hobgoblins. Oh. Yeah. Hello, friends. Uh, uh, what's up? Just what's up? <laughs> Yo, how's it going, my dude? <laughs> uh, what's up in Hizzle, my nizzle? Please stop. <laughs> Yo, what is the rock of throwing guys, down? Guys, guys, stop it. Not right okay. now. Session. Alright, but seriously. Uh, so they're just uh, standing around? They're standing uh, around a okay. campfire. It's, you know, later in the day. They just seem to, you know, uh. they're setting up early, it seems. Ah. Hmm. Hello, friends. <sighs> Pleasant evening. Yes. They they nod. Yes. Pleasant evening. Uh. Why did he stop? The kid is just right. Are you in need of any assistance? They look amongst themselves. We are good. 
Thank you for the offer. I'm so, what'd they say? We are good. Thank, Thank you. you for the offer. Ah. Anytime. Well, if we all don't need anything, I guess we'll be... They, they nod at that. Then you have a good it day. A, it was a pleasure. Yes. Uh, yeah, they'll give you a curt stiff wave, and you guys continue on. Yep. Oh, there's just some hobgoblins. Mm. They're out of place. And now, uh, Lincoln, make me the D100 roll. Let's see what your luck brings the party. Fifty. The party is swarmed by tarantulas. Oh. Why? They're all into everybody's eyes. Uh, that, don't worry, it's fine. Like, don't worry. That's, it, real, uh, it? that's not at all what happens, actually. That that would be kind of awesome, though. No. I don't know. This is actually kind of fitting. Uh... Uh, it actually fits. Uh, as you guys are going along, you guys, uh, this is again probably two or three days later, uh, you guys encounter six goblins as a traveling band. They're traveling in their own wagon. Ah! <laughs> How? There's a lot of goblins out here. Uh, yeah, actually, there's a lot of goblins. Yeah, these goblins are also... Uh, decently armed, they all look at you. Hi! One of them waves. Hi! Uh, hello. Have you seen hello. a group of hobgoblins? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah back there. Why? That way? Good. Thanks. Wait. Oh, no, on. wait. They weren't that way. I point the wrong direction. That's a deception check. Er, what? <laughs> A reminder, all uh, goblins and setting are female, so it's just six women all sitting in this wagon being pulled by two horses as they wave they at you. Like, Luke looks at you all. What? I'll get, I'll get to waste my um, inspiration and reroll. Okay, you can reroll it, yeah. Uh, Wait, did anyone get inspiration? Yeah, you start the session with inspiration. Okay, I, that gives me an advantage, right? No, you don't take it at advantage. You're rolling normal. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, it was it was suck if I get even lower. Yeah, it would, but uh, they could actually. Uh, they kind of look amongst themselves. Oh, they went that way. You said. Yes. What? Uh, can I, ha can I have your number? Or address, I guess? Letters? Oh, well, thank you. Uh, they look at Luke. You seem to be confused. What's the matter? He's always confused. It's his te One of the goblins points he's... a crossbow at you. Uh, ha, 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 hello. I promise I'm not flirting. Not anymore. No, no, shh. We're talking to somebody else, not you. Don't be rude. Mm. Okay. Well. Oh. It's just that we saw how gone was that way. I don't remember seeing any, way, any that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, thank you. That's actually useful. Uh, I'm Mary, that's Mary, and that's Matisha, and that's Matisha, and that's Natalia, and that's Carwin. They all wave. Pleasure to meet you all. Hello. If I may ask, why are you going after them? If I'm uh, one point, uh, Carwin, raise your hand. Oh, simple. Three of them are my daughters. Ah. Carwin is a older girl, probably in her forties. Uh, the other distinguishing detail compared to her, compared to the others, is she's probably also all these goblins' mother as well. Uh, we're gonna go beat some sense of them because they're being dumb. What did they do? Family business. Don't worry about it. That's but true. you know, some of the people they're traveling with are bad company. Uh, oh. all right. I well, get that. Good luck, Dan. Good luck. 
give them hell. Uh, can I quickly take some paper and write my mailing address and throw it to them? <laughs> you, you can do that. Uh, make me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Uh. Because you tried to lie to them. They are going to and go murder. Because you so never include Luke in on the plan. <laughs> that, no, no, no. That, that's the thing is, Towin came up with the plan by himself, so he didn't include anybody. That's the best part. So no, and, and it's perfectly fine. Damn it! And Luke is kind of a really, he's kind of one of those people who's like. He doesn't really lie to people unless he has a good reason to. <laughs> They're probably going to murder at least two of the hobgoblins. Probably the bad influences on her daughters. Wait, uh, so what exactly did these hobgoblins do? <laughs> Le Le Leaf's just going to casually say, Oh, I would do the same if somebody was messing with mom. It, it's a goblin thing. It goblins are super family oriented so yeah. uh, you can you that, that's the thing that it's something no, about fam no like I'm just pointing out like uh, uh, to Karen it, it's something it's goblin culture so dealing with family uh, you can make me a, a history check with advantage uh, to, I, to basically I figure out one. what could possibly be the issue All right, I'm going to make the roll and then I gotta step away that's fine okay Oh, nice! I'm, you actually I'm got just it. gonna say, Leaf would perf like 100 percent understand. He'd probably do the same. Yeah, yeah it, it's a goblin family thing. Uh, probably either a one of the. Mm, All right, I'm sorry, I'm back. Yeah. I'll come back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sprigs. It's either a you know like it's goblins are a highly family oriented thing. So if you sleep with one of Carwin's daughters, you're marrying that daughter. So. You can put two and two together and assume that one of those hobgoblins did something like that. And because they left, Carwin's response is, Okay, fine. We're going to go drag you back. If you say no, I'm going to shoot you with a crossbow. It's, it's uh, a shotgun wedding, basically. Yeah. It's a crossbow wedding. Yeah. That, that, uh, that, that's the most likely one. The secondary one is... Uh, goblins are super into consent because they fucking hate orcs. Because... Orcs kind of had them enslaved for several centuries before they became their own people. So, that. You know, they're, they're basically it's either gob Hobgoblin lied and did something bad or violated somebody's. Uh, well, violated somebody. And this is, you know, Goblin Justice, which is you go get your daughters and you go fucking hunt the person down. Carwin, which also probably means since Carwin has daughters, uh, uh, you know, probably the husband's back at home taking care of any daughters that are combat able. Uh. You know, it, it, it's just, you know, hob it's goblins being goblins, which is uh, hyper family oriented, a little bit overprotective, and, uh, you know. Right. Th those are like the so most. So it's. it's Kind of like a, a kind of a torn decision. What the goblins are planning to do isn't necessarily right, but what the hobgoblins did wasn't necessarily right either. Yeah, it's a morally gray area. Yeah. Well, I like, either I, way, either way, we already told them where they are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I said like, uh, twelve on my persuasion. You didn't have inspiration to reroll it again. I actually, I accidentally hit perception. Uh, that's fine. It would just have been an eight then, rather than a okay. seven. We're gonna keep the same roll. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. So, uh, you could try and convince them if you're worried, because you know, uh, you can roll. Uh, Luke, you can roll an insight, and so can Carwin. You can both roll insight and base. Uh. Which uh -huh. is because you two are the Insight. two, yeah, because you two are the ones talking to them. Because uh, one of the daughters is currently holding a crossbow at Towin. Ah, um, Towin is lost speaking privileges. You you've realized because he lied. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! In insight at minus two. Jesus. 
Nice! Okay, so... Some back and forth glances, you know, some nods, nudges. Luke actually... Yeah, you support... Uh, Carwin, Carwin supports you, and you guys go... Uh, the... The definitely the hobgoblins that are related to Carwin will be fine. So those, which are probably the three green ones, or the three orange ones, because those three all looked similar. So you know, uh, then so you're you're looking at either you're looking at one to three deaths at most for you know uh, crimes that would actually co uh, warrant you know potential death sentences. So you know, it'll uh, be fine. Yeah, it, it, uh, on a, on a, and but on the other side, you're like, oh, they're not, they're not murderous. They, they're, they're definitely willing to be practical about this. So, you know, hey, we don't know what those, uh, brain died. We don't know what the yeah. hobgoblins have done. Yeah, maybe it could have worn. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know that. Basically, it's going to come down to how the hobgoblins and the goblins interact. The goblins are going to try and be peaceful, but if the hobgoblins don't come peacefully, there's going to be a flurry of crossbow bolts. So you basically don't have to worry about anything unless the hobgoblins decide to go hostile. Hey, real quick. Which one looks the like the toughest? It's the mom. Yes. I'm just gonna uh, pull them back and go here. This should help you since they are, well. Yeah. I'm gonna give one of them my hand axes. Okay, they will take the hand axes. But yeah, it's a matter of you guys can go with to make sure there are no deaths. Uh, but you know, in all likelihood, there's not going to be many or any deaths. Basically, you know, you can double back for a few days. Hey, I don't mind. I can't speak. Well, I guess. <laughs> yeah. well, I guess so we could see if uh, see if uh, things go peacefully. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. You guys spend some time doing the doubling back and more. Just casually says, "Hey, if it doesn't, it's target practice." Yeah. Uh. It takes a bit, but you guys, uh... May I roll survival to try and track? Oh uh, yeah, you can roll that. That will actually help, because that can make it go faster. Advantage, or...? Uh, yes, because it's a fresh trail, and you guys knew where their camp was. So you guys can try and use that to... My rolls are always one or the other. Uh, I'll be right back, because I would use the bathroom. And I think somebody just shouted at me. Boop, boop, boop. Ah. So, why did you try to look, to lie to them again? They look like they were going to hurt someone. Those guys didn't do anything to us. To be fair, we like look like we're about ready to hurt somebody. Yeah. And now, and now I can't talk to them. Well, that's what you get for being a liar. That's kind of in my job description. Heck, even my magic show is right. me lying. I'm back. Welcome, Welcome back. back. Sorry, I'm I had to step away to pay the person that uh, fixed our air conditioner. Ah. Uh, Missed everything. We're all dead. Damn it. It wasn't my fault this time. Actually, it was sure. your fault still. You just yeah. You just don't know how it's your fault yet. You looked at you the said wrong hello. Way. <laughs> it started with hello and went downhill from there. Shh. Exactly. 
They just all they just all pull out more crossbows. <laughs> uh, can you talk to my friends? And then just a, a just a random ballista comes out of the back of the wagon for Carwin or Carwin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it takes about a day going back, then another half day. But you know, uh, they find and there's. Uh, uh, does anybody here speak Goblin? Nope. Is uh, it like Gromish? I can. No, it's it's yeah. not at all. Uh, yeah. There is a there is some shouting at Goblin when Carwin with one of the Hobgoblins more shouting. Uh, yeah, there's some arguing between her and one of the blue Hobgoblins. Uh, she points at the three green ones. Something, something, something. Goblin, goblin, goblin. Uh, more shouting. Points at one of the daughters. Points at one of the blue ones. The blue one gives a uh, sarcastic remark back. Uh, any of you All could right. intervene if you want. It seems to. All right, Car Carowin's going to definitely right. intervene. Hey, she doesn't know what's being hey, said. But she's getting a good idea. No, 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 when you when you say wait wait, wait. guys, you... Nink is trying to talk. Yes, Ninkin? Yeah, I... Look at... Look at... Hey, no need to be... To be violent! I'm sure everyone can talk this out! Nobody's think... being violent yet. Mm. Keyword yet. The Hobgoblin looks at you. Carwin looks at you. There's a moment of silence. We're they... all looking at you. I didn't say that out loud, did I? You did. <laughs> I just got to uh, work out my toy. I work out my toy. <laughs> Carolyn just picks up Toe and puts him in the back of the wagon. Okay. Yes. Sir. Shakes head. Yes, sir. Can you guys explain what happened? Maybe, uh, maybe I can help somehow. Uh, yeah. Uh, the. There's some more arguing between the Hobgoblin and the and Carmen the Goblin, who they seem to be debating about informing you. Uh, she folds her arms, he folds his arms, and she's like, yeah. he's saying that they did no such activities, but they very clearly did and it's a simple matter of there either he's coming back and so is or his companions and my daughters or I am going to beat him with this crossbow until he's black and blue yeah I don't see the problem here uh alright <laughs> Car Carolyn just kneels down at the hop goblins looks at the one that seems to be the center of the issues and just looks at him straight faced what happened yeah Luke you're you're definitely feeling like the tensions are easing a bit because you said nobody needs to resort to violence so there's the good news is that they're uh, most of the crossbows are down from the goblins most. the hobgoblins are meanwhile uh, the ones that are Carwin's daughters have gotten into the wagon with their mom uh, sheepishly a bit, but you know, you're guessing that they just kind of realize, mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, so as that's happening... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think I... Oh my god! I completely forgot I had the Comprehend Languages spell! <laughs> this is the best part, is that this moment that this is just the moment Luke pauses and then and then realizes that he could have been understanding this the entire time, and he just oh, well, give me a moment. Pauses. Right. So, uh, Carwin, Hobgoblin, what's what happened? Like, Luke uh, cast a spell on himself. Uh, I think I can. All... Uh, Sorry. He, the, yeah, the Hobgoblin says, I didn't even sleep with that daughter. I slept with that daughter, not that daughter. That daughter as well. But basically, he, he's trying to argue the semantics that she's... It's the wrong daughter that he slept with. Uh, 
which she's arguing that that doesn't matter. It doesn't. It, it, it really, really doesn't. it really doesn't. Uh, <laughs> it's also, you know, you convinced three of my daughters to come on with you so you could join some uh, mercenary band that's not okay. You know. Uh, so, uh, so they're about to get to shouting again, but there's the Goliath there, and the Hobgum's just not in the mood to try and anger the Goliath. And mm. Luke, they, they're they talking, uh, luckily for you, you can understand, because, you know, the, go the Hobgoblin that's arguing is talking, uh, a pigeon, which means he's talking sometimes goblin, sometimes coffin. Which means you get the full conversation, which is really useful. Uh, yeah, uh, I just... basically, yeah. Uh, I'm just saying from the short story that I got, I'm completely on the goblin yeah. side. Basically, it, it's a matter of... Uh, matter of family, man. Hello. You don't mess with family. Do I have but, family? All right. I mean, I mean, uh, whether you slept with that, with that I, one daughter or the other one, it didn't, it don't matter too much since, in the end, you still slept with one of her daughters anyway. All right, you're just going to bring up. It doesn't matter. They're all still people. They're still alive, and they have names. Do you even know what what their names are? Uh, he says something in Goblin, uh... Which Luke can understand because of comprehend languages. Yeah, which is why you understand why the crossbow bolt goes into his eye. Oh! <laughs> yeah, uh... Well, Alright, that, that's a bit much. I, um, I just... Hey! I, had, I, I said, said no violence! I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, nice shot. Yeah, uh, so, uh, Luke, Luke, uh... Specifically, it's a goblin word that's also an orcish word. And it roughly uh, translates into common as slave stock. Yeah, right. he deserves that. No violence, too. What? Alright, that was very racist. Yeah. yeah, that's that was Specifically, it's also for. the orc word for goblin. So you can you can see why that kind of is also, it's it's literally it's the goblin word for why orcs suck. You know, because yeah, orcs. still words. They're words. That's not uh, an excuse for violence right now. That was uncalled for. Um, you you can you can be mad. You can swear. You can cuss up a storm. You can even <laughs> scream. But words are not a a reason for violence. Yep. Uh, that is a very fair question. That's a very fair point. To be fair, it wasn't Carwin the Goblin that shot at him. It was the daughter that uh, had relations with him. So you're guessing hearing that maybe <laughs> soured the relationship. I just going to stick up my head and risk it by saying, that was hot! I <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, you just, you just hear that. <laughs> Uh, well, make of that what just, you will. Just a stare. Just <laughs> a stare. <laughs> Is it Luke who go? Uh. <laughs> Carwin just Carwin just looks over at the goblin. Not again. Just don't do it again. Uh, Still a turns, good shot though. Then turns back. <laughs> Still a good shot and perfectly warranted. No, it wasn't. No, we're trying to keep things. We're trying to keep things uh, civil. Shooting something is not civil. Ah, uh, I mean, the... Le Leaf's just going to mutter some things in a All different right. language. <laughs> yeah. Uh... All right. So Carolyn's just going to look at the hobgoblin. Well, well, I, I guess. Wait, is there any way I can? I mean, Shit. you, you, My the thing is, is the awful. hobgoblin that was talking was speaking of the pigeon, meaning half his language was goblin, half it was common. So you were getting half of that. So when he said right, the well, goblin. What half did he get? 
<coughs> you got, what, what you got enough that because based on Luke filling you in, you and based on what Carwin the Goblin was saying, you were able to fill it all in. You so you you understood, you understood it was something like super, uh, you know, not pleasant. It, it still is words. You're correct, but you know, uh, you can understand how it could lead to a such a vitriol response, as it were. And please try not to understanding say to understanding. Again. Understanding the reason for the response does not excuse the response. Oh no, I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying that. You, <laughs> but you, still, yeah, she's, she's going to look at the hobgoblin. Did you know what you were getting into when hob- you decided to sleep with the goblin? He's currently cursing about the fact that he's got a crossbow bolt in his eye. Well, I That'll mean, she, she can't do much about that. She does. She doesn't have any medicine skills. She just kind of looks. At anyone? Can anyone help? Uh, sorry, oh, I oh. don't have it. Healing potion. Oh god. Uh, All right, she's gonna she's gonna so try and take the bolt still have out to of his get eye. The crossbow bolt out. All right, she's gonna pick the bolt out of his eye and give him a healing potion. He's going to step back when you try and approach him, getting behind the fire pit they've set up. I'm trying to help. I need to remove the crossbow bolt. I have a healing potion. Uh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad words are said. Uh, no crossbow bolt this time. Uh, that's the good news. But he's not taking your potion. Uh, would you uh, rather would, if you choose, to have a wounded eye? I will respect your decision. However. We still have the matter of the issue at hand. Did you know what you were getting into when you chose to sleep with the goblin? Uh, yeah, you, you know that he knows that. Hobgoblins are literally what happens when a goblin and a orc have a kid, or when a goblin sometimes has a kid with a hobgoblin. Other times that's how you get a bugbear. So... This guy, this guy's mother is a goblin, or his parents are both hobgoblins. Either way, there's some point in the family tree where there's a goblin huh. or goblins. So you know, he is very aware of goblin culture, especially since he's on the mainland. He's not a, on the the basically equivalent of Iceland. Orcs are from. So you know. He's a douche. (sighs) Alright. Then you have a choice. You can accept the responsibility for the actions you chose to take or you can accept the consequences for rejecting your responsibility. But just know that if you accept your responsibility you will have people that love you even if it takes a little bit of time to get over your uh, words. Indeed. Uh, if, if you can't tell, though your words are moving to the goblins, uh, the leader is going to shout... Uh, I have my bow ready. Yeah, he's going Actually, to- no, no. I, I have my shield and sword ready. Like, I'm re- about ready to grab them. Uh, yeah, no, you have them ready. Uh, he shouts about uh, uh, attack and split. Uh, you know, so uh, you guys can roll initiative because he's he's done with the talking, basically. Oh. What's, it, what's initiative? Oh. Uh, just click uh, click on your token, then click initiative. Really? Natural twenty. Uh, And it has to be on a fucking initiative roll. I can't select (laughs) my token for whatever reason. Send help. Same. Same. Oh, whoops. Uh, I forgot to highlight my token when I did that. Oh. Alright. 
Yeah, I, I can't select my token. There, you should be able to select it. Alright. So, I told Karen's you. just gonna Karen's just gonna grab her shield, hold it in front of her, and just brace herself. She's not doing anything. She's tried her best to be a mediator in this discourse. Whatever happens is gonna be, be between this hobgoblin and the goblins. Uh, still nothing. Okay. Can you move your token on the main map? Uh, no, I cannot. So over here on the main map, on the Ringwalt map, you can't move. I can't me. move it either on for my own. Uh, this is why I told you guys to use fucking token tool, but you still haven't done that. We did. It's the sheet. I don't know how that's possible. I I'm not sure what to tell you. I'm just gonna give you guys uh, both a new sheet so you can, after the session, fix that. Copy everything over after the session. Like. <laughs> That's all. Uh, yeah. And make sure to use a version of the token that you can place Luke on the map. Luke is just, uh, just face it. <laughs> just draws off. Light branding goes. Oh. Y'all were doing so well, too. Oh. He really doesn't like violence. <clears throat> hey, look! You rolled well! And wait, let's see, uh, who has the better initiative between the archer and the... Also, all of you guys rolled fucking well in your initiatives. There we go. Uh, so the first up is the archer. Uh, okay. Which is you. Well, Leave. first things. Well, since he has the shield, uh, he's covering for the goblin. Uh, I'm just gonna instead just go for my bow and just shoot somebody. Preferably the one that uh, got shot in the eye. He's going for the. That's a. That's a good choice. Okay, uh, make an attack roll. Okay, I can't tell what character tokens are supposed to be what. Uh, I didn't mean to roll on the roll initiative on that one. Yeah, I, th I thought there was like the the one hop goblin, and then the rest of them were like uh, daughters to the goblins. No, okay, nope. so there was eight hop goblins total. The three ones that were green were the ones that were Carwin's daughter. They're the ones that got back into the wagon. Basically, they, her, the mom yelled at them in Goblin and scolded them. And they kind of, you were like, uh, they're like, okay, <laughs> mom. Yeah, basically, when, when your mother cusses you out for being an idiot uh, and just been traveling for how many days, you kind of listen at that point. Right. And uh, so it's, it was just the one hobgoblin that's uh, that was respond that you know they're we're shouting back at you, which is the one that's on the opposite side of the fire pit. The other two right. on each side are the two other orange and the two other blues. All right. They're the well, they're the ones that are just uh, they're the ones that seem to be willing to fight for their boss right now. But there is no good you know like hobgoblin image on the roll twenty just for generic tokens. Oh. And well, it's a random encounter, so. Yeah. Yeah, no point in... Yeah. Uh, Jib, roll the damage. Six. Okay, uh... For the guy that has a crossbow in his eye. Yeah, so... So... He... So we roll advantage on her? Uh, I didn't mean to roll advantage. So, your hit to hit is twelve. No, oh, he's got advantage because this guy's kind of, you know, dealing with a crossbow in his eye. Oh, okay, that's fair. The others you don't have advantage on. Also, make sure to toggle on and off advantage. You have the ability. Yeah, I, I, right there. I thought I did. That was just a my bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was gonna knock the uh, the leader out and just hand him to the... Well, uh... You know... He's dead now? Uh, well, currently he's on the ground. He may be dead. You don't know. He's definitely uh, unconscious. 
And based on the second arrow, it's either in his jaw or in his other eye. Which isn't the best thing, but it's also not the worst. Uh, uh, Carwin. Right. The other four have all raised up their uh, spears and their shields. and uh, Alright, well, she's just going to look at the four that are still standing. <laughs> I have no quarrel with you. I give you this chance to walk away. Uh, this dispute is not between you or us or the goblins. Just him. Roll and intimidate. Flex on them. Oh, uh... Is that with the bonus? Because uh... she's She's compared to the hobgoblins. She's like big as fuck. They're they're hobgoblins, so they're you know they're actually you know like five foot tall. So yeah, you're still big as fuck, but it's not like a goblin where you're three times the size. All right. Yeah. So seventeen. Plus these guys have some moderate military training. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're you're very. Uh, they they are definitely. Uh, the two on the right that are closest to you are definitely intimidated. You uh, don't know what that means, but they're 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 they have a look that says, "Ah, oh, we're we fucked up," or "We're in a <laughs> bad situation." <laughs> yeah. Uh, then it goes to Luke's turn. Yeah, no matter what, Carwin is not uh, going to participate in this fight. She's just going to try and talk down the four that really just they're they're not involved in this and they don't need to involve themselves in this. Yeah. All right. All right, y'all. If it... <coughs> you what? You guys just let us ha have him. We'll let, we'll let the rest of y'all go. <laughs> y'all really don't want to make her mad. Trust me, you really don't. <laughs> Are you trying to intimidate or persuade them? Uh, I mostly my... persuade them. <laughs> Roll a persuasion. Let's see if it works. Because he's not the kind of guy who would, uh, would intimidate someone. I I kind of want to see how this goes. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I have my bow trained again on one of. Oh them. my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. Okay. Uh. We'll get to you on that. Uh, Toad, it's your turn. What are you doing? Uh. Uh. First, um, before I do anything, um. Carwin, Carwin. Yes. Um, do you mind if I borrow one of those killing potions? I want to sneak over there and make sure he's alive. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> she. Uh... Oh, he. You're all right. He's still in the. He's still over by the wagon, but yeah, he can move yeah. over to you. All right. Yeah. You can, Yes, you can have one. All right. So your move, your your movement is to get over there. That's the first fifteen feet of your movement. You can grab the potion and then move another ten feet. Uh, would going to stealth be a free action? Uh, it's a it's a bonus action. So you can basically uh, slide next to the pot of the fire. Yeah. I'm gonna allow it this time because they're they're a bit distracted. Uh, so. Uh, it goes to the leader's turn. He's going to make his death save. If... Uh, as he is lying there, kind of gurgling. Uh, he is... Stay uh, alive! Stay uh, alive, you fool! The one over here, uh, with that persuade, is gonna go... Uh... 30... Uh, he's gonna go all the way to here. So he he he's he's moving away. Toen, you can make an op attack if you want to stab the guys who are running away. Don't. No, no. <laughs> as as much as is, 
it's what I people do. We kind of be peaceful about this. Uh, the one that has been intimidated by Carwin is just, uh, he's giving a half-hearted attempt at resistance, Carwin, and by that I mean he's going to try and stab you with a, with disadvantage. You realize that it, it's him trying to, you know, he he's definitely scared of you, and he's definitely, you realize that basically how, depending on how this goes, depends if he's just going to fucking book it or not. <laughs> he got a 19 to hit you. <laughs> he fucking actually hit you. He's like, I actually. There, there's. A, he's like, he's like. Uh, no, I wait. Uh, she's got her shield equipped. Does, doesn't that um increase her AC? Let's see. What is the AC on your sheet right now? Uh, your AC is eighteen with your shield. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he literally just hits you with a nineteen. <laughs> if you have scratch. Yeah. It's actually not going to be that bad unless he's... Uh, oh, yeah. He's like... <laughs> and he thrusts and he's like... You're like, ow! He actually gets you in the bicep. And there's this <laughs> there's this moment where he, he's confused and shocked. And uh, you're not sure if he's more scared like, that he hit or that he's... If uh, he looks at Luke, <laughs> Luke's still going to go... Uh, <laughs> she, she, just, she just reaches out. Puts her hand on his while the spear's still in her bicep. It's like, friend, I understand you're scared. And I'm still giving you the opportunity to walk away. You do not want to throw your life away. Uh, he's going to use the other... Uh, uh, oh yeah, Fred's about to come back on. Yeah, his, the rest of his movement to get over here to next to the boss. That's it. He's just like... Uh, bip, bip. I'm just gonna it walk does. away. It just like has a shield up. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's very scared of you, Carwin. He's also scared <laughs> of Goblin Carwin, the woman who's you know staring him and his men down. Uh, she's not shooting because she's trying to be polite to you guys. Uh, it's now the other two guys, and they actually didn't get intimidated. Because they did well and weren't persuaded. So, I guess they're more loyal to their brother and or just assholes. One or the other. Wait, they they weren't persuaded even on a 24? Yeah, they... they uh, yeah, they, they... They rolled really well on their whole... Uh, being an ass slash morale. God uh, damn it, this is... They did well on well, I basically treat it as a will check, yes, but not exactly at DC 24. But yeah, it basically, the other two who are already frightened, the one outright failed it, so he's just like, fuck it, run. The other guy, he had passed the intimidate, but then he failed the persuade, so I was like, oh, he'll make one attack, and then, yeah, he's just retreating now. And the other two weren't affected by the intimidate, and then weren't affected by the persuade, because they have yet to roll below an 18. Huh. Yeah, they, they, it seems these two are either more loyal to the cause or, again, as I said, assholes. And they're going to move up at Luke. First one goes. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, what is Luke's AC? I think that hits. That actually Thank hits. God I'm hiding. Don't worry, it's fine. Hey, he did six damage. And the other one goes up and goes, ah! Ow! And also hits. Uh, and he'll add his martial advantage because he's like, oh, I don't know what to do. It does holy shit. Are you alright? Six and then a thirteen. Yes. Uh, I'm at zero. The, the, holy shit, you got down. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. So they 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 tag team onto Luke and Carmen. Luke goes unconscious. You see. <laughs> yeah. So you that's realize that's these that's... two aren't being intimidated by you. Uh, they, uh, which is not good for you. But on the plus side, it also means that uh, that means you have some targets to release any stress from dealing with the obstinance. 
Alright. Carwin uh, picks up Luke. Okay, uh, actually, first up, it's Leaf. But then, yes, you can pick up Luke. Leaf, uh, are you going to shoot at anybody? Uh, yeah. Uh, one of the guys that took out Luke, I'm assuming? Yep. Okay. Make a shot. Anything about it? Uh, no. No disadvantage, no advantage. Just normal roll. That will miss. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, he's able to get his shield up to catch the arrow. And then, Carwin, you can pick up Luke. All right. Anything else you're going to do? Up Luke. Yeah, uh, she's going to uh, just kind of kind of uh, set her shield on the ground and then with one hand take out her uh, maul that's about about as big as she is. Are you going to smash the goblin in front of you? <laughs> she is going to smash the goblin in front of her. Reckless? Hobgoblin? Hobgoblin, yeah. <laughs> Are you going to reckless this? Sure, why not? Go for it. Alright. Gain advantage on your first attack roll. Alright. And this is advantage. Yeah, I think and let's put a rage on that too. Okay, yeah. Uh, this poor go angry. this poor old girl is not going to have a good day if this hits. Get dead. That that definitely hits. All right. Roll damage. Funk. Uh, oh, that didn't roll damage with it. No, you're gonna you click uh, mall plus rage. No, you, you hit the mall plus range. Yeah, then it rolls the damage. Because that way, you know, it doesn't auto roll the damage in case you missed. So go into the chat window in the roll twenty, and then click mall plus rage. On the oh yeah, click that. See there, and that is enough. So there, there is a hobgoblin there, and then there's a mall there, and Towin, uh, I'm you, covered in blood and gore. Uh, <laughs> you're covered in blood and gore, and meat chunks. Delicious meat chunks. Uh, I'm not gonna... No. Luke made me a death save. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry that they rolled... They both got an attack roll that hit. That was... The, these hobgoblins, those guys... Also, hey, at least they rolled under an 18. <laughs> but it was fucking 16. <laughs> oh, dear. Towin, uh, you know that Luke's kind of bleeding a lot. Maybe you should it, go save him instead. Uh, not, yeah, you you have a healing potion. Yes. Yeah. Um, I thought uh, Carwin still had a healing potion. She's though. got she two. two more. She's got two more. But yes. I don't. But she's also I, dealing with the other hobgoblin. Oh. All right. So I, I just I just want to know. And she can't do right? it while raging. Yeah. I just want to know. Yes. It's what happened enough to scare the shit out of the other two still conscious goblins. Uh, so I'm gonna make a with, I'm gonna make a will save for the one that's uh, there. Uh, let's see if he. <laughs> yeah, because okay. he's right. He's right in the splash zone. And and he rolled a nat <laughs> twenty, so he's okay. oh, he's strangely okay with this <laughs> experience. He looked so. at that guy and said, "Fuck that guy." Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> um, the one that was running away. Uh, his action is going to be, fuck this shit, we're out. And he and his buddy are gone. Hey, uh, hey, um, Inquisitor. Hi, Inquisitor. Uh, Towin? Uh-huh. Are you applying yeah. the healing potion? Uh, y yes, I take a five foot step in. Four down is out. Okay. Uh, the leader of the goblins is okay. Okay, and uh, this guy is okay. So he can. S oh, you can also stab the guy that's there, Towen. You can move over here and stab. Uh, this uh, guy. Oh, uh, am I still in stealth? Yeah, you can stab him in stealth. So roll advantage. I I'll get to use dick attack. Yeah, do it. Because yeah, I'm a sneaky motherfucker. That hits. He does not have a shield, so that hits. And that's also uh, enough, so you stab this guy after you heal Luke. 
and you guys have handled this. Uh, so, uh, you you've made two hobgoblins realize that maybe listening to assholes is not a good idea. Uh, they've run the I'm fuck off. You murdered uh, two others very handily, and uh, going to check on the leader. Uh, you find that he is dead. He is bled out in the meantime. Well, I... We would have found that after we go to tend to our friend. Well, yeah, um, but you told our tenant to leave. Well, yeah. Uh, I know, oh, right. but I want to, like, sl- I'm just... I all, Last I know is that he was downed and everyone's running away. Um, I throw an extra arrow at the people running just to be sure. I don't care if it hits or not. Do you, want, do you want me to roll or not? No, no, no. You can just make a fire for effect shot. Yeah. All right. And I'm gonna run over and slide to make sure that our that our fearless leader is okay. And I'm um, gonna do Medicaid to make try to. Bring... Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we'll, I can't we'll... move. Yeah, I know. I know you still can't. We we've been over that. Anyways, I'm yeah, gonna this... clear the board because everything's derp. I go, go to look to the... at. Go back to the map. I'm gonna look at Carlin and ask, "Did you really need to hit him that hard?" I was just a slap Joan. I'm red. Tolan is now painted red. Also, just he's got slapping. bits of blue skin on himself. Like, <laughs> she's painted red, and she's still in the midst of a rage. I should be yelling at you. Seeing Luke almost die pissed her off. Tolan's got a nice and, new and, face and mask being made slatted. from the and being slapped, trying to just going, wake up, damn it! Slap, slap, wake. He, he's healed. He's conscious. Luke, <laughs> you're in the arms of an angel. And by an angel, I mean a nine foot tall Goliath woman who's covered in goblin blood or hobgoblin blood and uh, gore. I just can't look at you and just walk into the blood and leaving. No, it's not to tell. I mean, it's worse. okay. Um, here's what. Ho- Here's what happened, friend. In order to make the last of the money, we essentially uh, no. He let he, he essentially he did again. some he, odd jobs. He, he's gone. And then later, he left. He left. Oh. He didn't want to be here for it, apparently. Yeah. Uh, like. Yeah. Don't. Well, we'll we'll talk about that after the session. Uh. Yeah, uh, yeah. You guys get cleaned up. It takes a bit, you know. You you help the <laughs> goblins. They're on their way. They, you know, they'll be fine. There's nine of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm. I do apologize that we couldn't settle things civilly, <laughs> and I, yeah. I also apologize for losing my temper. Le- well, uh, Leaf just says, "Oh, I think things went perfectly. We got exactly what we wanted for." Oh no, less assholes to fine. deal with in the world. It's fine. Well, you know, my daughter's temper also triggered too, and she did sh- almost. You know, she partially instigated. These things happen. And I want to apologize for trying to protect those axles. Well, <laughs> man, I kind of wish we could have taken the, that guy alive, but oh well. It's better off this way. Yeah. I tried. I tried. Uh, it it ain't really, honestly. That wasn't our call to make. It, it's still fine. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you guys handled it, and as mm-hmm. you guys pack up, you continue your journey from that point on, and you guys make it to where the Druidic Circle for meeting is. Uh, okay. Everyone. Okay. So, Inquisitor, uh, everybody wants to hear what uh, Will's idea was. Everybody wanted to end up immediately end up saying that they wanted to end up raising money, and nobody wants to end up giving up some kind of prized family heirloom, for example. Right? Um, Correct. I have two magical artifacts that I can pawn off. Fairly easily. That's true. Yeah, I suppose. But one of them was stolen. No, the dagger, the dagger is a different item. Friend, that's friend a got because item. of backstory stuff. 
Just like how technically Bookmark's Mithril Necklace is magic item, which will have stats once he figures out how to use it. Fran has a quarter staff, which is literally a family heirloom, so your dad would yeah. be really pissed if you sold that. And then he's got a sword. I'm, I'm, I didn't say sold, I said pawn. Yeah. Two very different things. Yes, that is fair. That's Selling what I was in. trying to simply stay. Everybody was too busy trying to talk over each other. It was the problem. No? Yeah. No, no, we ar asked. no, no arguing. No arguing. No. Stop. Baps. Baps both. Not oh, I time. like bats. What mm. kind of bats? No, baps. I refuse oh. your little playful it's thing. Alright. Yeah. But yeah, FPS, everyone can admit that we were being a bit loud. Bird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's use the most sacred sense of their nerves. They don't just do one thing. Yeah, anyways, yeah, so you guys have made it to the Druid Circle successfully. It's been a nice two weeks by wagon. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, uh... So, just quite simply, I would be end up stating... Not stating, but asking what the hell happened when I was gone. We lost Luke. <laughs> I'm still alive. Yeah, we lost Luke. I can still hear him. Funny. <laughs> no, yeah. but he did go down. Uh, he was mm -hmm. unconscious for a bit, yeah, but he's okay. Uh, yeah, so, but yeah, you guys, yeah. Uh, Will, you saw uh, Luke Oh, yeah, down. we did some... We decided to split the party into two groups. No, stop, what? stop. That's not true either. No. We didn't? Okay, no, then you didn't. You Stop. D don't. Just Because I'm misremembering things then. Y yes, because you kept suggesting you split the party, but nobody wanted to do that. Okay, what the did we do The group did odd jobs I would have. I, I would have ended up calling you all stupid if you would have ended up splitting the party. The group did two, two days of odd jobs and stuff because that was pretty quick, and they got the money, uh, got the horses, got the wagons, uh, traveled out, uh, Help the Cyclops find cheese. Uh, that's not a joke. Met, met some hobgoblins and met some normal goblins. The goblins were looking for the hobgoblins because shotgun wedding. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, arguments didn't go well. There's three dead hobgoblins. Uh, two hobgoblins reconsidering their lives. And three hobgoblins very, very, uh, very sorry about what they did to their mother. Uh, in the sense of going off with some other hobgoblins to form a mercenary company. So, you know. Uh, and then after I'll another... Uh, honestly, it was a relaxing little journey, honestly. You guys got some lucky rolls. And you also, know, we ended up uh, getting a little girl back home. Yeah, also a little girl back home. You got some healing potions from so it. So I'm guessing the session is getting close to done. Uh, no, you guys have arrived at the circle, so we're going to be doing the circle stuff now. And uh -huh. so, we always get all the cans. Uh, so very first thing is uh, the thing that sticks out the most obviously is the fact that there is one a uh, giant raccoon there. Uh, and it is yeah, kind of sitting. Sure. Yeah, there, there's, a pair, there's a pair, there's a giant raccoon there. It waves at Carwin. <laughs> Carwin jumps out of the wagon. Joe! And she runs over and picks up the giant raccoon. Carwin! And, and a hug. Hugs back. Well, you wait, you would, li you would like and want him to be a. Uh, <laughs> Yes. It's been a while. It is, yes. Makes me glad I never... I never tried killing any. <laughs> he 
pats her on the head. Ah, these must be your traveling companions. Hello, I am Joe. Where do you come from? Where do you go? Uh, hello. He, he waves. Greetings, Governor. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Joe's very friendly, and he's an excellent cook. Yes, I'm going to be performing the feast. I think that's a very funny What thing to feast? Well, we have guests. So, you have so to have a feast. Of course. It is in kind for you to do so, but I was cu curious if there was a certain kind of celebration going on. Oh, I mean... He looks up at well, the sky. No, no, there isn't one. Well, I mean, we are about to meet the Druidic Circle, and it has been quite the journey. Hey, I don't mind. Hey, question. Do you guy name? Do you know a man named Guy? No, I do not. He's also a chef. He's a relate. He's a family member of mine. I thought you might know. Sorry, we chefs don't, you know, yeah. collectively, you know. Oh. No, and no with one another. Also, there's the fact that y you know this is a month's journey from where you guys are, with That's good fair. weather, you know. Yeah, uh, Joe uh, is going to say now. I must leave you, little Carwin and Carwin's friends. Uh, the the raccoon taps its muzzle and then points. Uh, That's Towin. He points at Towin. That is Wilbur. Points at William. I'm William, not Wilbur. Oh, my mistake. I must. I must have gotten the name wrong in the letter. I'm so sorry. You it could have simply asked if you're unsure. Uh, and that is Luke and Leaf. And oh, yes. Uh, he points in the wrong order. Uh, he er, points at Leaf as Luke, and then er, Luke as Leaf. I'm, er, I'm Luke. Oh, Close I'm enough. sorry. I'm sorry. You, oh, you humans, all very much look alike. <laughs> Especially when they're we're not even human. Especially when they're small. <laughs> well, I think it's just Indeed. I think it just adds all, the raccoon like, uh, awesome. waddles away to go prepare a feast as. Ah, uh, you guys are, uh, left alone at a large clearing with a mosaic stone floor. The stone itself seems to be a combination of granite and marble spreading out in a pattern. <laughs> Carowin just runs a hand through her hair. You guys, uh, get settled. I'll, I'll start setting everything up. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. You all are, are far too kind to end up doing this just for simple visitors. <laughs> oh, it's never too much to be kind. Usually it is. No, not where I'm from. Uh, yeah, it's about that Double time. That. A uh, tall woman with brown hair that's been wreathed with flowers and uh, soft uh, oh. yellow green oh, eyes uh, wanders okay. into the circle. Oh, that's cute. Uh, 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 does uh, Carwin see her? Yes, everybody sees her as she approaches. Oh, Carwin, Carwin makes sure to bow. I follow suit. Leaf would do so out of courtesy. Uh, uh. It's been two days, Luke. Hey, well, uh, thanks for what we do. We literally just play for <laughs> Willie, oh, Willie uh, would do just... Random question. Did I get any of my arrows back or no? No. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, Inquisitor? He would just do a half bow. You know, the the, the one yeah, in which you would end up putting the hand over the heart. Just dry, bow a forward higher. a little. That uh, I'm saying we we'll played with dry. We had a higher... Well, dry percentage has a higher... Yep. And what about you, you Luke? Don't. Are you bowing as well? Uh, <laughs> Luke's on, uh, hello. <laughs> Are you okay? 
Well, it's more he's still not used to the whole common courtesy thing. <laughs> he, he it makes sense. Uh, oh. Abigail uh, smiles. Hello, I'm one of the archers of the circle, oh. Abigail Poyon. My lady, a pleasure to see you. Look. Hi. Hello, Luke. The rest of you may rise as well. Oh, you. Just by himself. I've read the note and heard. The Was he innocent or he just down? Uh, she's going to move over and uh, take each person's hand. Here. Can I have a question? Can the person with the background go to push to talk? Talk here. I'm cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and. She just moves around. Oh, there was a neck in her eyes. Uh, kiss each of your hands gently, smiling. Well then, uh, you wish to petition us based on the note for oh, educating the some people. Game, well, say, yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, yes, my lady. Yeah, say, well, uh, we've come across a, an unusual situation in which we need to help a group of. Uh, how to say, uh, we need to help in rebuilding a kingdom. And I thought it best that uh, the Druid Circle and, of course, Joe would be a, an excellent option in helping to educate the people, especially in the ways of the land. It's best not to say option more but more akin to that of saying that we are going to end up being blessed, end up having such valuable p people be assisting us in the rebuilding of such <laughs> step. <laughs> oh, we, uh, dude, dude uh, I'm just, Willie will always end up making you guys end up saying, people, especially higher ups, love it when, you, uh, when they think they're doing you a favor. And they usually charge less. <laughs> um, we don't know how much they're going to be asking. Sure. That's what I'm saying. For all we know, they might end up asking for territory, a, a section of land, or maybe even people. We don't know. Therefore, <laughs> best to end up getting the best low okay. price. Uh, Carwin just leans down to Abigail. It's like, he's I... never dealt with druids before. I'm just thinking who better to teach people than probably one of the earliest forms of civilization. Oh, oh that's a very kind compliment. Now, hmm, I understand that you all must have some concerns. Is there any way I could alleviate those? Okay, concerns... Mm. How much is my wallet going to cry? <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Mr. Uh, William? At the, How about at we the start moment, with you? Uh, Carolyn <laughs> will excuse herself so that she can get the uh, the, uh, the 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 feast ready. You know, with the yeah, you can do that. Yeah, but All she's right. yeah, she's addressing William fully. If you have any concerns, now would be the time to speak to them. He would end up a asking for, at the very least, a more private setting to voice any concern. No, there is no one here besides us, and that is how it will be. This is the circle of greetings. It makes so no sound enters and none leaves. <clears throat> oh, so yes, he would end up saying, then... I have to end up asking, what will the circle end up asking in return for assisting us here? Well, if what I've been informed by Carwin is correct about its nuances, the simple fact is you're going to need of uh, our numbers at least 50 more in the range of 100 which we can certainly provide. 
Oh, I did not mean to do that. Uh, the asking of payment, though, that is odd. Why would we need payment? It would be just as interesting to study the fauna of that region if it's been a sped up pocket dimension. It's going to be very unique, some of which could be useful for medicines, combat, and more. There's also the fact that at a sped up rate such as that would be inside, many of our membership would simply be living there until they had to taught their wares, at which point they would most likely, since they would not be attaining odd truth status, uh, mm -hmm. pass on, often from old age, etc. Hmm. It's a simple matter of that our payment comes from the fact that we would be gaining much to learn and we'd also uh, some of us would gain a greater flock from the people and well our circle would become a part of them in a way as our lessons would be taught to them I think that is very interesting would be a good experiment. I simply had to ask since people I'm used to. to never do anything for free. Or at oh. the very least they don't do it for a specific reason. Yes. Gold is good, so they say. I'm just going to say this out of character. I don't like how she said combat was number two. You can't defend <laughs> peace without war. I understand that, but still. You can't <laughs> cleanse a forest of bushfires without burning it down. <laughs> Case in point. So, uh, Carwin just kind of pipes up. It's like, you do realize that forest fires are a part of the cycle of nature. It enriches the ground and helps if new life flourish in the forests. And it cleanses of disease. Yes, it is very true. <laughs> it also makes charcoal, which is highly valuable. Yes. She head pats William. Why are you head petting me? You are smarter than you seem. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? I'm laughing at a character. I, I am just, not. I got there. I'm in the back. Luke, Leaf just says, "I find it funny." <laughs> I mean, it just is. It... Yeah, what do, you, what do you want? So, Wait, is, is he asking the Abigail what she wants? Or what the druids want? Uh, I think the was asking the Inquisitor. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, she's just going to smile and say, We will help as we can. Uh, hmm. Is there any other questions that I can provide answers to? Uh, I got nothing. Hey. Hmm. <laughs> How would you and your circle be making the travel? Because it took us quite a bit to get here just on Mount... Uh, just on... That is a good question. It is a long distance. There are a few options. I'm trying to remember if druids can shapeshift into animals. They can. Yeah. So certain classes can shapeshift into certain types of animals of their tree. 
So yeah, li some occurs can literally just be birds deciding to fly from one area to the other, and they can and taking shit on nobles if they wish. <laughs> they probably do. Well, to be fair, in five you'd be like a level eight person. At which point, why are you just a courier? I mean, why why are you an adventurer? Uh, well, she's going as well as like, oh, that that's an easy statement. Uh, we will organize up our membership. It will take us a bit. There will be a discussion. William will have to provide reasons along with Carwin and the others. <coughs> we'll each need to provide a stance for why. Then, once that's done, uh, an impassioned speech to the assembly. Each member will donate members from their students. None of the Archdruids, of course, can go because they will need to stay to be teaching their remaining students, except for myself. At which point we will either A, uh, use various spells to travel, such as cloud walking, or we will use some other means of transportation. After all, we don't want to delay. And a, and a feast is great for discussion. Puts Indeed. everyone at ease. Indeed. <laughs> Alright, uh, I assume uh, Carwin has finished uh, setting up the feasting area. Yep, with Boxer Joe. It is a very large feast. There, There is a lot of fish. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys are brought over to that circle, and, uh, well, uh... As you guys leave the circle, you suddenly hear a lot of noise because, yeah, you see, there's definitely like 500 or so druids here, uh, and it's a feast to match that massive number. Uh, there's other arch druids. You can tell mostly because uh, a lot of them look to be older. Abigail leads you all along with a smile. Carwin hugging and greeting uh, druids in kind. Oh, yes. Hello. 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 Hi. Hey. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> My character would just be giving various amounts of them just simple nervous. nods. Luke just looks nervous. <laughs> Why are you nervous? Are you worried about the one that's got the sickle? <laughs> that, that's currently humming while sharpening it over a uh, altar? That's just Larry. <laughs> Carwin just claps William on the back. No need to be so closed off. Everyone's family here. I'm being polite. I am being polite. And I am be, uh, being one of my stature. <laughs> Carwin just leans in and is like, <laughs> I, I understand, you know, things are different. Uh, but it here, you know, it's just, you can be more open. It's fine. I As... don't expect you to end up understanding my <laughs> responses as I expect I don't expect you to understand yours in my setting. <laughs> She just claps him on the back again. It's like, I understand. I'm just letting you know. Yep. Uh, Abigail leads you over to a certain table with a bunch of food. And she waves. And the table's wood kind of morphs and grows out a bench for all of you to sit at. And she motions. Well, since, since um, Carlin's telling us to loosen up, I begin to show some of the younger... I get your edge magic tricks. Slow hands. The game is showing it. Uh, just sign yeah. it. Yeah. The, the, there's a lot of giggling and happiness of this at your show. <laughs> well, I'm guessing what Liam will be talking well, with Abigail for the, this for the quite portions of this duration. Yeah, it, it's, you know, setting up a feast. Uh the guy that's sharpening the sickle over the blood altar uh, brings up a goat 
you know, they slit the goat's throat. Oh, and the blood altar. All oh, hail the blood altar. <laughs> All hail the blood altar. Yeah. Uh, I have more of a blood throne kind of guy. They skin the goat. Uh, they remove Dash. all the meat from the bones and start roasting up that. And when they start doing that, people start serving the fish and other stuff. Uh, and you notice that they take the bones and the skin and wrap it up. And you notice one drew touch it and the goat's bones and skin kind of rattles a bit. And then the goat's bleeding and confused. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Yo, What's wrong? Don't, don't worry about it. They just raised that goat from the dead that they're eating. You don't worry about it. <laughs> I would chuckle a bit at that, going like, okay, now that, that is funny. <laughs> Karen was just catching up on, uh, w catching up with uh, Boxcar Joe and some other druids, you know, on what all she's been doing Luke since she left. Luke disturbed. Uh, what are you talking about, Luke? Why are you disturbed? The goat's taken over to a pen with other goats. Um, they raised the goat from the dead. It's a different culture, dude. Just relax. <laughs> relax. They just raised goats from the dead. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I mean, if that's what they do, that's what they do. I mean, when I end up married Leona, I had end up uh, sleeping with her in front of an entire crowd of people. Excuse me. Uh, is that not how? Is that no. not how? Okay, no, I forgot. It's an aristocrat thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. she just looks. Uh, Carwin just looks over at uh, Williams like, <laughs> you, "You should meet the fertility druids. <laughs> it's not that uncommon here." Please stop. Don't don't worry about it. Uh, you know some ferrets talking to your ferret. I. Oh yeah, heavy. Hammy and, and, and the ferret are riding anywhere else. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Luke, uh, uh, since you are a guest, uh, you, uh, one of the druids approaches you, uh, and smiles. Uh, it's an older man, he's, uh, seems to be based on the fact that he's got a gnarled staff with lichen that glows on it. Uh, he walks over and offers you a bowl. Oh, uh... Knuckle uh, bones in it. Thank you. He nods. Oh, yes, it's fun. Roll the dice. Roll Good the luck. dice. Ah, uh, yes. What am I rolling? Uh, I am Sia Mason. I see something special. I wish to see if I can peer your future through the knuckle bones. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he holds up the bowl. There's knuckle bones in it. Uh, Human knuckle bones. Cool. Can I go next? Of course. Uh, so, what do I do? You pick the knuckle bones up, you shake them and blow on them, and then drop them into the bowl. Uh, oh. Okay. Look. Do not worry, the man that they belong to are long dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's the first archseer of the circle. Okay. Uh, he look, picks up the knuckle bones, uh, shakes them a bit, blows on it, and uh, casts them into the bowl. Uh, they cast in the bowl, they rattle around, uh, you hear some clicks, clatters, and the seer nods and peers over it, uh, pulling out a small jug and pours some wine on them, shakes them, nods, and tilts and pours out the wine on the ground. Interesting. Er, what did you see? I see good things in your future. That sword of yours will 
bring you much joy? Uh, the light brand? Is that what you're calling it? Uh, well, that's what py that's what Pyro want want wanted to name it. So, yeah. Well, it's a terrible name. <laughs> when you meet who gave it to you, maybe they can tell you what its actual name is. What? That is for me to know. A seer can't reveal these things, young man. They will come Wait. in time. Uh, okay. But it was a gift from someone. Right, I kind of want to know who now. I'm trying to kill me with a freaking meteor. He chuckles a bit. Ah, the media child. We've heard of you. Wait, what? Well, do you think we just live isolated in the woods? Err. Isn't that what y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's a, another soft chuckle. Uh, don't do you, do you think that there could be this many people living in such close proximity that we do not have some form of settlement uh, I guess not indeed it it's different than what you'd expect yet it is still very much its own I believe the term is uh, town, not full city. And we serve our queen diligently. Oh. I. Oh. That's uh, neat, I guess. Well, at least some of us do. You know. To each the uh, he'll toss toe in as well, uh, and he chuckles. Oh, you'll meet her again. Wait, her? Her? Uh, is it? Yes. It, it's her, isn't it? Yes. She's good. She's very important. Disappointed in me right now, isn't she? Yes. Uh, this is a real job. It's, I'm not stealing anymore. <laughs> she needs to get off my back. Yes, but she's a bit upset because you lost such a good relationship. She ended it with me. Uh, that indeed. Ah. Uh, uh, and both of you can roll me a D100 for that. Uh, well, Abigail sits with William uh, as uh, Carmen oh, is busy. Uh, uh, William, you got a you got a pretty yes. extrude next to you. Uh, she's pointing at the various groups. Uh, so those are the awakened ones. They uh, are most. Uh, I guess you could say stereotypical. They most spend time in small solo groups, except for when they're teaching a student. Their Archdrude is the man that could best be described as wearing a grass, uh, uh, well, skirt? Skirt? She yes. She points at the, uh, a dwarf wearing a grass skirt. He's incredibly hairy, because he's a dwarf. And has a full beard, and he's talking to some ferrets. Good, cover up. I don't want to see that while I'm eating. God damn. Uh, yes. Uh, he's. You want me to help then, Tawa? No. Oh, well, it's quite easy. I can just blind you for the entire duration. <laughs> Last time you did that, I was blind for a week. Oh, yes, because you forgot to end up uh, looking at me while saying it. 
you know, I prefer you to say to me with respect, I'm saying with a freaking <laughs> soft smile. If I may. Yes. Don't magic on me. Do the yeah, voodoo you do. Yes, Leaf. I'm going to have my fortune told as well. I'm uh, quite curious of what it could be. No, Sierra will tell your fortune in a second. Uh, Abigail smiles us. Well, William, uh, which would you like to speak to first? We have the druids of the community, which is mine. I'm already completely convinced, but you could still spend some more quality time convincing me in other ways. There's the awakened ones who specialize in, well, if you can't guess, uh, awakening animals to make sure that hunting doesn't get too devastating to the ecosystem. There's the craftsmen. They're the ones that make trees into buildings and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, the fair folk, the ones that uh, travel to the Feywild the most and speak with the elves. Uh, that live there. And also the other Fey. There's a few other groups as well, but those are the main ones. Uh, also the fertility druids. You can tell who they are because they're the ones that are uh, over at that side of the party. She points to... Uh, so the party is just that. It's a party. It's full on, you know, celebrating. There's some dancing, grinding, music playing. Uh, as you get closer to the fertility side, it uh, clothing becomes more of an option and less of a requirement. Right. Yeah, my hair party. Go any further. It's gonna be an orgy. Uh, orgy, orgy would imply that everybody's getting it on with everybody else. <laughs> well, when in Rome, I started. Sh- <laughs> God. So I- <laughs> I'm Mark, kidding. I'm kidding. I, then- I would, I would make the comment that you're no better than an animal. <laughs> I feel like I would insult the animals. <laughs> Uh, just because it's a fertility thing does not mean it's a full on orgy. They yeah. have some class. Yeah, just being fertility druids just means that the the, the circle that they preside over uh, helps uh, promote, you know, and keep you know keep up, you know, animal uh, population. At gunpoint. No, no, yeah. no, no. They just they just more or less <laughs> oh, like they making... just pull out a gun. Do it or else. <laughs> they're, they're basically a different side of the Awakens. Whereas the Awakens are all about basically making so that there's super intelligent animals that can basically report to the druids that there's people doing shitty stuff. The fertility ones are about other things. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like making sure that, you know, populations okay. stay healthy, that everything's in balance. There's the you, for, the you people forgot they also do stuff regarding to the soil, right? Oh, they do. You guys keep them here for And, time. yeah. Yeah. They're, they're the ones that are probably the most fire-oriented, which would explain why a lot of them have fire tattoos. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. F- fire nurtures the soil. Um, I only said that as a joke. I never, I didn't really mean it. <laughs> Abigail just kind of is going to sigh softly. Well, William, after all, you get to decide the pace of this. Huh? She, she's because William is the one that's going to be speaking for you because he's nominally your leader, right? Uh, which yeah. means that uh, he's the one that's going to be speaking on your behalf with the first group. <laughs> yeah, you just got cowering over there, mouthing, "Don't fuck it up." <laughs> when have you know I'll be just looking at her with a raised brow going like since when now <laughs> think it like we're having we're like we're talking wordlessly to each other <laughs> it's like she just kind of s- says since now holds up both of her hands points out the index finger and then just kind of points them uh, downwards like emphasizing since now don't fuck it up 
and then everyone's like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just now... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna continue going like, like, you're being over your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just now getting like flash, like like a uh, Doctor Who when the David Tennant Doctor meets up with uh, Donna again, and they're just like across from each other, like behind doors, <laughs> mouthing stuff to each other. Pretty much. Uh, also, <laughs> they, yeah. Uh, Leaf, uh, he tells you that uh, he congratulates you because the next time you sleep with your wife, you'll have another kid. That that's all he says this year for you, Leaf. Aww. That's okay, good he, news. He has a bright future while I have disappointment. What? No, you you have somebody disappointed in you. I'm gonna be disappointed when I see her. I mean, she's always disappointed when she sees you. Exactly, it's a mutual disappointment. <laughs> but yeah, Inquisitor gets to pick which circle first. And then he. So Inquisitor also gets to pick which circles each person's gonna go to. So, you know. Oh, God. Yeah, Inquisitor's right. basically in charge of assigning where the party goes. Alright. <laughs> where are we going, Inquisitor? Which circle is each person gonna have to convince? Kaiwen is immediately going to end up going for the uh, fire one. That's the fertility one. Yes. Making sure. So yes, it, it, she's immediately going to end up going to end up talking to the fertility ones. So you're saying Kaiwen <laughs> to go talk to the fertility ones. Okay. Yes. All right. Yay. Oh, exactly. Yes, uh, Ninkin is going to end up talking over to our lo uh, lovely... To what? Yeah, yeah no, family stuff. Like, yeah, you're going to end up talking to, uh, talking to the more primal ones, considering that's probably the easiest one for you to end up talking to. So you don't <laughs> accidentally insult them. Because let's, let's, let's be honest, you didn't know there was multiple forms of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy your new time, though, Tommy. I feel like he's just punishing the party at this rate. <laughs> well, so, I mean, really, the it's gonna feel like punishment to the all of you. Carwin's used to this. Yeah. Uh, Luke. So if he if 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 my character really wanted to punish you guys, he would take you to a nice, boring, noble party in which the only real excite excitement really is when you end up arguing with the waiters. Yeah. Because let's be honest, you guys are going to be arguing like, why is the food so tight? Why is this all to eat? Where is the real food? Oh yeah, Carolyn would definitely be really out of place there. Yep. Uh, so you what do you mean I take the silverware? where? Yeah, that that was already a thing, you know, poor parties. Uh, so, okay, that's the first two. You still have builders, you know, the guys that actually build the cities that Druids live in and stuff. Yeah, with, this, with the city one, I was going to end up assigning that to Book, okay, considering so he knows the cities. Druidic cities, yay. Okay. Uh, so... That leaves uh, Jib with yeah. the last one. Which my are the... Which are the ones that are the ones that handle the most magical stuff slash uh, making sure they don't make nature too prominent. They're the balanced ones. You know, Who they, would I be speaking with? Uh, well, yeah, we're going to go to that. Uh, and, you know... God. Yay! Brain not braining. <laughs> kind of feels silly. It's like, oh, and it's the fertility incorporates more than just it's nature in general, and I'm just not braining them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so, yeah. The, the good news is, uh, I want all four of you to roll me a D100. And, uh, Ab and meanwhile, Inquisitor gets to deal with Abigail, who's technically the nominal leader of the, all the circles. Thus, you know, he gets to deal with the... 
And she's adorable. Yay! But yeah, the balance ones are <laughs> technically the ones that also make the magic items. They're the ones that do all the, you know, like, well, we don't generally wield metal, so we need to make all of our weapons, or rather, not all of our weapons, but all of our armor out of, like, dragon scale, hides, etc. So they are the ones that make it enchanted against the cold and whatnot. Okay, right. okay so Toen, uh, okay, we're gonna go, so it's Carwin first. Because yep. we got the lowest. Carwin, Carwin, you approach the uh, utility. I'll be right back. Yeah. Oh, is it Lois goes first? Yeah, Lois goes first. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, there is some actual sex going on, but, you know, at the fertility side, uh, you know, they're intermingling with other people as well. Uh, the leader of the Druids for them is uh, a gentleman in his... Uh, Physically, you're guessing uh, 30s, but you know for a fact that he's older than your uh, grandparents. Uh, he's a uh, human, uh, and he's about six eight, and he smiles and says, "Ah, Carwin!" and he and he goes over and hugs you. Uh, outside of the fire tattoos covering his shoulders, other fertility tattoos going all across his back. Uh, the only thing he is wearing is a codpiece. <laughs> Carolyn hugs him back. <laughs> uh, it's been a while. Yes. Uh, it is, uh, this, oh, yeah, uh, he is Master Avon. Uh, oh, so, I understand that you are in a bind and need educators to teach others of the ways of the fields, the crops. And yes. Interesting. Yes, uh, we've stumbled across a uh, a ruined kingdom as outside of time, and they need a lot of help rebuilding. If you and say... The oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, no, you just, if you say... And he, he, he starts getting serious, uh, settling down with you, nodding for you to continue. Yes, and I felt it was very important that they be taught the ways of nature, fertility, you know, regr regrowth, uh, balance, everything. And so I came to you. Interesting. That's, that is good of you. Uh, if that's the case... If I really think what you're saying from that letter is true, it will be much work, and I won't be seeing students again. Uh, that Indeed. is troublesome. That means I'm going to have to be giving up both good students and some bad ones, so I still have students for teaching. This is... This is most difficult. Yes, I understand that this is a great... a greatly weighted decision. And I trust your judgment. It is... Uh, it is a difficult one, but it is one that we must undertake, no? I agree. Uh, Alright. If you really need, you have our support. I thank you. <laughs> she gives uh, Master Arwen a hug. Uh, yeah, Arwen, yeah, you, you do that. And now we get, uh, well, we're now going to do the highest next, which is Toen, but I don't think he's back. Yes, I'm back. Good. Okay. Toen, you got a double. So I do. how do you, yeah, 55. Uh, okay. So here's my question. How do you fuck up when you approach the builders? Why does why do I have to fuck up? How do you fuck up? What what do you do that make things immediately be in a not positive light? I 
I tried to take out the best way to insult them without actually insulting them. You can end up saying it like this. Ah, oh, so you're the civilized ones. No, I don't think I'm that dumb. He isn't dumb. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a matter of what do you do? Do you go uh, to the wrong person for the leadership? I most likely do. I look for the one with the most fancy, fanciest robes, like a mage okay. college. Okay, that that's a good choice. Uh, the fanciest robes. So, uh, Leaf, you have to direct Tawin away from you because you're trying to talk with the leader of the bill uh, of the mages. As he approaches <laughs> and tries to get involved. <laughs> he's like, hey, you're the person, and then it's like, no. Uh, uh Towen, no, no. Uh, I think, think you're a little over lost. There. Yeah. Uh, Wait. Yeah, yeah. So, Towen, it takes you um, a ch two tries before you're directed to the right person. And you see a very, very cross frowning almost you'd say angry elf woman staring at you uh, I'm going to be sheepish she's wearing a leather long coat uh, it's not fancy it's practical and she's covered in pockets full of what well, you're guessing are various spell components and other things and as you sheepishly approach she gives you well you wouldn't call an evil eye but a very Annoyed eye. Oh, uh, hello. Um, I'm assuming you're the leader of the builders. Yes, I am. You, you, your companion is talking to Arwen. I am Avon. It's a pl it's a pleasure to meet you, Avon. I'm sorry, I went for the one of the most fancy fanciest robes. I'm kind of used to dealing with city folks, and when they want to be, well, leader of fa fancy, they stick out like a sore thumb. Uh -oh. She nods. Anyways, I'm here to talk to you about um, how you can help with and build a new kingdom. Well, um, I'm pretty sure you heard the legend of, uh, what's the name of the city? Lushu. Lushu? And how it va vanished a couple hundred years ago? Well, apparently it was stuck in a, a different dimension by some wizards and we stumbled upon it. And the uh, people there has, well, no culture. And we want to educate them. And we thought, well, the Druid, Druid has many skills and specializations. And you can be the first to teach people to be both connected with the land and how to build. <laughs> Carwin just gives you a thumbs up from across the, <laughs> the party. You you can roll me a persuasion tech, Towen. Just roll I'm, that persuasion. I'm being, I'm being straightforward and honest. Yes. Carwin gets a nat 20 on wherever you assign her because she's automatically going to be liked because she grew up amongst these people. Her nomad tribe is technically part of one of the circles. Persuasion? Yeah, persuasion. Just oh, normal? Yeah, normal. Uh, Oops, I did not, I didn't change it. <laughs> yeah, so you got a six on your persuasion. Oh, no, he rolled per, uh, perception. But his persuasion's only one better. Oh. So it's a six. Huh. Yeah. Wait, wait, this new sheet doesn't have the... You have to go tackle. set it for that. Here. You go into gear, you go here, and then you <laughs> click Advantage Toggle. And now it's there. Just oh, like I that's how you go in there to set it so you have expertise by going into, say, Sleight of Hand and changing it to Expertise. Uh, and Stealth to Expertise, which I think is what you had. 
Yeah. Yeah, so there you go, see? I did not know that. Here you go, say. Yeah, uh, so there, there's a cough as she's kind of giving you a look, Towin. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're not wowing her. Uh, you you feel uh, as though your comment about civilization is not the right. I did I did say civilization. You said that they they need civilization, which I said uh, culture. Culture, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know it's it's not the worst text. It's just it's definitely one of those things where uh, she's definitely thinking it over. Uh, is that so? If you really need it that badly... Yeah, Abigail's of course going to give it freely because she cares about helping others. Yeah, not to mention the line about teaching them to be closer to the land. Yes. And, and being building. respectful of... And, and yeah, that was a really good line. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> I was being straightforward and honest. I. Oh, who? Who was Booty? Who was there again? Fine, fine. I can, I can work with this. I can work with this. I have an offer for you. I okay. Can, I can send people to do this, but it will cost you. Uh, I can talk to my leader and see if if we can arrange that. Uh, what will it cost us? Uh, she hands you a seed. A seed. Plant this where you want the capital of this civilization to be. Uh, okay, I I put it in a safe place. I will talk to my leader and see what he says. That is my cost. I bow my head to her. There's no talking to your leader. It is accept now or don't. I accept it. Good. I'll plant it as soon as we get over there. Yep. And then we uh, leave. Uh, you're dealing with the mages. The Please. Yeah, you're dealing with the mages who you have that incident with Toen. Everybody kind of coughs like, whoa, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's not the uh, brightest tool in the shed. I'm Master Klaus. Nice to meet you. Uh, Pleasure is mine. Yes. Oh, yes. It's good to meet companions of Carwin. She's been so far away from home. Ah. Uh, yes. Oh, we would love to help, but... Such endeavors are very costly because we only have so many of our membership. It's quite understandable, really. Yes. We're low on numbers as well. <laughs> that is, that is most distressing. I can understand more where you can draw us then, with uh, certain aspects we apply. Listen, your leaf, yes. That is correct. Yes. I'm willing to. Send ah. my members to help over my circle, but to do so is not something that I can just do willy nilly. I I can either send you the worst of my students, or I can send you most of the worst and some of my better slash best. But if I'm to do that, I need something in exchange. To be quite honest with you. I think the worst students should go, as it will be a good opportunity for them to get experience in the field and learn how to... Oh, is that so? <clears throat> Very well, then. That works for me. And he holds out a hand. Uh, I think that's... It happened a... to me. It's what uh, an old relative of mine told me when he took me under... That's how I became to where I am today. I'm able to raise him. I'm able indeed. But yeah, he holds his hand for you to shake it. I take it. Yep. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's down for it. Yeah. That was easy. 
Yeah, he's. <laughs> yeah, it's a matter of that with him. It's if you want to convince him, you have to do something. Otherwise, you get less quality. But you know. Uh, yeah, Karen would have disagreed with that decision. I mean, you auto pass on that, so you were. <laughs> The, the best part is you went to the fertility guy. Basically, it's because you're family, so you just immediately, wherever you're sent, it doesn't matter. Toa <laughs> did okay, because he convinced the lady, uh, but he had to also offer something, because he, you know, his words were good, but she was doubting him, so he had to offer something. Why was it, why did I stutter at a disadvantage? You didn't have disadvantage, it's just that if you roll with the toggle off I was going to go with the first one which is the 5 uh, yeah because that wouldn't be fair because then if you would you know because going by the toggle because you rolled higher because effectively you would have been rolling with advantage you were supposed yeah. to be rolling without uh, no I was I was wondering why did the, um... it's because the sheets are designed to auto roll with advantage because it's so easy to get it uh, anyways uh, we now cut to Luke Luke uh, you're approaching. Uh, you're directed. Uh, one of the people's like, oh yes, they point over to the guy that uh, slit the goat's throat and raised the goat. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you gotta talk to. <laughs> you approach Master Lindstrad. Uh, he is a Goliath. So, yes. Uh, uh, hello. So that's what Mr. Muskie. Pardon? <laughs> yeah. uh, he looks at you. Ah, hello. You must be one of Clarkman's friends coming to speak on behalf of your mission, yes? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, all right. Uh, um. He taps his sickle on the stone table, waiting for you to say something more. <laughs> it gleams in the moonlight like a silver <laughs> razor. <laughs> You can still see faint traces of the blood in the reflection on it. And you can also see the pen with the goats. They're watching it. You uh, swear they're watching it. Right. Uh, my uh, p pals and I, we needed help uh, uh, with the... Uh, with uh, rebuilding a kingdom, you you, you see, and uh, um, we were hoping if you guys would be willing to help us. Ah, uh, yes, I understand why you're here. That is not a problem that needs to be addressed, but I am to understand why should I assist you? Oh, um... Uh, well... <laughs> keeps glancing at Sickle. Keeps glancing. <laughs> trying not to stare at the goats in the reflection. The giant Goliath man and it's like... Uh, the tattoos you know, I on just, his body. You know, I just absolutely love how... Uh, your uh, your uncertainty on how to progress just translates so well to your character's uncomfortableness with the situation. <laughs> you know, he's wearing a goat skin. You're not sure if it's been of the goats that's been brought back to life. Is that possible? <laughs> or does he does he need the skin because he wrapped the bones in the skin? That, uh, you know, he's got a he's got a meat horn though, made from a goat horn. Uh, he offers you the meat horn. It's it's very large. Oh, uh... Drink, boy. <laughs> You're needing it. Your spirit's faltering. Oh, uh, 
Thanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess he drinks from it? Okay, you can make me a constitution save. Where does Luke end up? Drunk, what? drunk, drunk. Thirteen. Yeah. Uh, oh no, yeah. wait a minute. It was a constitution city. Oh no, wait. Yeah, that's thirteen. It that's didn't right. matter. Yeah, you don't have proficiency in the constitution cities. Yeah, so you, you chug down the horn. Uh, you're feeling a decent bit better, and he's like, All right, lad, speak up. Uh, as he, he, he can, now that you're less focused on the giant sickle meant for a half giant man, you can notice that his eyes are very warm. He's a, uh, the man's got a well maintained beard. Uh, he's a Goliath. Uh, he's, uh, got a shaved body. Uh, uh, some, uh, Tattoos on his arm, but no tattoos on the rest of his body. Uh, and he nods, waiting for you to try again with convincing him. Well, <sighs> okay. <laughs> so, so we can. So we essentially think that. Uh. With how the how the kingdom is right now, the you guys teaching him a bit about about, na about nature would would do them so good, you know, you know, helping them with the being able to grow grow their own food, how to manage uh, how to manage the animals and what all that. Sorry, um. <laughs> I can just imagine he gets frustrated. Takes a deep breath and then just goes over and gets Carolyn. No, no, no. <laughs> this is a, this is the thing. Thus, he's your negotiator for this guy, uh, for Master Lindstrad. So Lindstrad, <laughs> Lindstrad could go grab Carwin, but that would be rude. And two, <laughs> you know, your leader just dis decided that this guy was the one appropriate for this. Thus, I know. Just, I was <laughs> joking. I was joking. Uh, he hands you another horn. Uh, Luke, uh, these are big horn sheep, by the by. So this is a really big horn. Uh, he hands you <laughs> these a are drinking horns meant for Goliaths. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> chug, chug, Sip chug. Boy, you need three booze. All right, thanks. I know he's gonna pass out at the end of this. <laughs> yeah. oh my god. Use your inspiration, reroll. Well, I don't use it for anything else. He's fine. He should save it for the persuasion check that he's going to have to do. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah good point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah he's, he just nods as you as you finish up the horn. As he says, it's okay, it's okay. Take it slowly. So you want us for that. I understand. Right. What other options did your group discuss? I wish to know. Well, the other things we we were discussing about were were to help them to to learn how to how to trade, how to be able to how to be good negotiators and. So and and then well eventually help help them be a bit more be able to defend themselves a bit better you know can't let can't let them know how to fight too quickly or they or things might go go south very fast Interesting. <sighs> all right then he uh takes his own horn, swigs it, and not this. This makes sense. You have a plan in action for how you will organize this. Alright. I'm on board with it. I will provide people. For right now, though, uh, make me a persuasion check. 
This is important. All right. This because he's a he's agreeing because, yeah. Talk to you later, yeah. Inquisitor. Bye, Inquisitor. Yeah, yeah it went. It is a little yeah. bit long. Night, night. Uh, oh. sad. Uh... Holy shit! He's still convincing, even when he's <laughs> kind of drunk. <laughs> That's a hero for you. Uh, actually, alcohol gives you a bonus to your charisma, but it takes away from your intelligence and wisdom. Clearly. But, you know. <laughs> he is a hero. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's going to nod, uh, pat you on the head, and he's going to hand you a box. <laughs> Ugh. What's in it? It is something for you. Mm. All right. Can I wish I had him now? Um. Th thanks. Towin Towin gets the crit fail and approaches the guy. He just cuts Towin's head off. Oh God, Towin! No. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to explain it simply, Book. Anybody that got doubles would have had a complication. Basically, they fucked up somehow. On approach. <sighs> you just happened to be the one that got it. Shit. It, wa it wasn't anything personal. Literally, just anybody that got 55, 44, 33, 22, 11. Basically, basically whenever a number repeats. Yeah. Center. Doubles. As it's called. Slowly so, annoyed. 100 would have also counted. <laughs> Yeah, it's this. a one in ten chance. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Carwin definitely approved of what you said to the uh, to the builders. Yep. Uh, he shares some more booze with you. Uh, you're too drunk to check what's in the box. Yep. And uh, it's saying do. Oh, you can actually hold the sticker this time. <laughs> at this point, Carwin's also half naked, hanging out with the fertility druids. I was gonna make the joke that it, yes, it's a it's a druid gun, and by a druid gun, it's called a crossbow. <laughs> uh, so this is where we're going to get uh, to a fun thing, uh, Ninkin. Uh, at this point, you're already gone. Uh, you you you've been drinking. Uh, a high snowfire uh, proof ale. You're you're, uh, you're going to wake up the next day hungover as shit. But I went went a druid next to you. Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> She's uh, very pretty. Yes. Uh, so they can go find a picture for the lady that you wake up next to. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, now then, as, uh, that's, you know, the Goliath is gone into the fray of the fertilities. Uh, yeah, you, you guys have handled your things. Uh, so next session we'll be actually getting them incorporated into Lushu. Uh, because you guys actually managed to pass all of these, since each group's willing to help, they'll be able to teleport everybody there. Which means Yay. that you guys will get there, it will take a full day for them to make the teleportation circle, but that means you guys will get back, and it will take you, <laughs> it will take you a grand total of how many days, guys? Uh, I can't imagine. 16 days at most. Uh, close. 14 days to get there, one day for the feast, and one day for the druid circle. There was also the two days spent, you know, organizing and getting money, even or if you had sold oh, yeah. one of the magic items and then stolen it back, it would have still taken two days of that. Because you would have had to plan out the pawn shop to steal from. And you would have found a pawn shop that can pay out, like, 300 gold <clears throat> for one item. That's magic. That, that's hard to sell. Yeah, Ma Magic items are hard to sell, like, especially when the two noble families are fighting. 
And, uh, yeah. Either way, uh, it was 17 days or so. So when you guys get back, it is going to be 408 years inside those shoe. God. I'm so glad my friend is frozen. And this is why I point out that, you know, if you don't freeze the people, they're dead. Because it took you guys that much time. Oh the... my god. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, why we were discussing a lot. I mean, that's the <clears> important <throat> thing, is that you guys need to do the discussing because you need to find out what you're doing. I didn't even think of that. Who's alive? Uh, well, all the all the people that are were slaves to the masters have had kids. They they're not they're not un incapable of having kids. They're very much still yeah. It's they're they they're still but I mean when we get back we will... in terms that are related to us. Uh, yeah they're like nice. we were dealing with they're frozen time. Okay. Yeah, again okay, Lushu is through the portal. You guys are currently outside the portal. Your family is outside the portal, Chip. I keep mixing that up. I thought my aunt was in the portal. No. Yeah. Jib, uh, well, actually, one of your aunts is in the portal. She's in ice, though. That's the thing. Okay, good. Thus, she is not aging. Which is the good news, because otherwise she would be dead. Yes. So I had a log and... But you could meet her... Like uh, well... Keep in mind that a human generation is about 20 years, and you can figure out that, you know... 20 generations removed grandkids. Oh. If she had any. She didn't, though, because she was frozen. Yeah. But if you hadn't frozen her, you wouldn't meet those. Because, you know, what my best friend would have been long gone. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so what kind of seed do I have? Uh, right. It's a have walnut. You... Have you ever played Morrowind? No. Okay, so, alright. So, basically, they've got a dark elf uh, faction, as it were, called the Telvanni. And their, like, their wizard towers and stuff are made out of giant mushrooms. So basically, the seed you've got is basically going to grow into a building or a housing that the druids will, the uh, crafting druids will use. Yep. And by the time you guys get back, the druids will have been incorporated into Lushu's cultural dynamics. And either everybody will be a druid or the druids and the Lushuites will have blended into a new culture entirely. And then there will be that. Yay, fun. But yeah, that's for next session. Uh, this session. Well, si well <laughs> do we have time to do any uh, miscellaneous RP? Uh, yes, you guys have plenty of time to do miscellaneous RP. But yeah, uh, yeah, miscellaneous RP. Like dealing with uh, a awoken drunk uh, and other things. Yay, fun. <laughs> <laughs> so who did you wake up next? So I basically got a General Sherman. Sherman. Also, book you still can't place your token. It is twenty. It's it's a tree. Book you still it's can't. A <laughs> Here's a druid option. Again, you need to actually make the token so you can actually place it, but you can't. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that was the entire reason you were given the new sheet, so you could actually place the image as a token. Like Jim can do with his. Yeah. You needed, you needed to fix that. Uh, have you translated everything over from your old sheet? I think so, did. Okay. Let's I got some bad news. What? I can't drag and drop. All right, are you are you clicking on your image or the the name? The image. All right, click on the name, hold it, and pull it over to the map. It, it took me a couple tries to figure that one out. One 
once you cover things, Jeff. But yeah, miscellaneous RP, guys. Whoop whoop. I'm not too sure what outside of have my fortune told, which didn't get done yet. Oh, no, no, you did. He told you next time you sleep with your wife, you're gonna have a kid. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, we're dealing with the morning after the party. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh,. There's what gonna be. Name? Uh, Carwin is absolutely naked, save for her uh, tiger hide. That's weird. Uh, the belief uh, when he's he's faithful, faithful. I mean, I think Carwin's still faithful. Uh, as yeah, well. if you, yeah, yes. I'm don't, supposed to don't, get what I had at this rate. I'm single. Yeah, you you should have the ability to edit the sheet. Uh, Good. There you go. I'll, I'll re-give you access. There you go. Now you should be able to do it. If you uh, weren't already. Yep. Thank you, man. There's... Dancing in Cohen. the uh, I cannot... Yeah, I, uh, it just, hide, just highlights the dev thing. Hey, it's okay. We'll figure it out together. It's okay. Uh, well, yeah. There we go. Yay. Uh. I think this works. Luckily, luckily, the good news is uh, a certain Azimir can travel with you. Yes. Let's go. Well, not. You don't have an Azimir. No, I don't, but it's more people to the party that we can talk to. Yeah. It's Carwin's wife. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you have employees that you know can take care of the kids, and. You know, your daughter has a magic dagger, and you're also guests to the nobles, so. Yeah. And right, you're also all on your boat. Uh, all right, I put in the image. That is adorable. Uh, it's in the allies. Yes. Traveling companions. Um, that is adorable. I'm jealous. Luke, you wake up next to an adorable druid. Her clothes are laid neatly next to her. So are yours. Uh, what happened? Snuggles, <laughs> snuggles. <laughs> like, can't Luke just... put two and two together about what happened? No, he can't. Like, like, He's too innocent. He's slowly turning his head to look. He's too innocent to forget. Aw, Luke, the gun. you made a friend. Uh, right, I was going to ask the druid, the druids if they have anything to help with hangovers so I can give it to my friend who drank too much. Look. Carowin, Carowin just comes and... over to Luke with a horn full of water. It's like, here, friend, I think you need this. <laughs> uh, I think... <laughs> I think you can tell he's already putting two and two together. <laughs> Luke is confused. Has Druid snuggling into him. Her head's on his chest. Uh, ah! <laughs> I did Did I... Uh, you did. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, now you have to marry her. As is said in goblin culture, yes, you have to marry her. <laughs> Except she's not a goblin. <laughs> or is she? Well, nope, no, according to us, you have to do it. We have the gun. That's just a crush What? <laughs> Iris gonna hurt me. <laughs> What's the matter, friend? You seem uncomfortable. I, I did. 
I didn't do the thing with her, did I? You did. Yes, you did. Oh. <laughs> Cuts she to the just previous had... night of you shouting, I'm gonna fuck her, guys! I'm gonna have sex with this girl! You kept rubbing uh, it in everyone's faces. It was really annoying. I uh, want to stab you! Let's just... Puts his clothes <laughs> on and just... <laughs> walks away! <laughs> You can't just leave this. <laughs> uh, Luke, as you try and get up, she's still lying on you and snuggles in, pulling you back in. I make, a strength, make a strength check to uh, d no. disentangle yourself. I, no. I, get, I'll get, can I please let go? I went to look at the Jewish and say hi, Uncle, and one of his friends was like the best man. The mostly naked uh, Goliath hands you the horn of water again and is like, Friend, you it may take a while. Just she yawns sleepily, getting up. Oh, hello. <laughs> Tell him it's a pleasure to meet you. She snuggles, Luke, and hello. Uh, who are you? <laughs> who am I? Luke, she keeps you already very acquainted. I think names are not needed at this rate. Yes. I don't even know what she is. If she misses Shane. Last night, I don't think they need to be restated again. Um. She's just a Shane. Look. <laughs> I don't even remember what happened last night. Uh, it was yes. a very, very lovely wedding. My my friend here can't hold his liquor. Oh. He's a. Uh... He's a good boy. No. She she leans no. in, putting her palm on your forehead. Oh, you poor thing. Here, let me make you feel better. Should we leave the room? She no, it's a it's a, it's a field. There is no room. Yeah, so there is no room. Uh, she kisses Luke on the forehead. Oh. You feel less hung over, Luke. Luke, you lucky dog. <laughs> you still need that water. And just to stay hydrated. Uh, right. <laughs> she just snuggles in. Oh yes, we should definitely stay hydrated, especially for the next time. <laughs> <laughs> what? She's girls attached to you. You must have been a beast in bed. Carowin just slugs him on the shoulder. Well done. I am proud of you, kid. <laughs> Look, I, I'm sorry, but... I... How are you going? <laughs> You're sorry. <laughs> that, that's your character's <laughs> response, but trying to say no to the druid. How can you? You, you just can't, you especially monster. if it's something like that. How can you say that to such a cute <laughs> face? Exactly. With his words from his face. Yeah. His soon-to-be-not face. <laughs> er, can you please get off? That's cute. Uh. <laughs> Carolyn just kind of moves over, sits down beside the druid girl, and is like, well, it seems that my friend here may have made some, how should I say, unintended choices while he was drunk. Those <laughs> my choices apologies. were made regardless of what's done. <laughs> he was live with his choices and he made a good choice. <laughs> Heck, I would get to know her. I kind of wish I drank too. Uh, perhaps, uh, she just kind of holds out her hand to the druids like, perhaps we should go somewhere and talk while he gets himself sorted out. Oh, yes, yes, we we have to arrange the wedding feast and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> what? He has no! to provide the dowry. Yes. It's okay. No, um, no! 
Luke, I trust that you can handle such an easy task. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ben, have a seat. I need to have a talk with you. So Toad's dragging Luke off, and Carwin's dragging off Boudica. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. Kid, kid, kid. It happens, you got drunk, you got lucky, and there might be a wedding in the future. <laughs> all, all you have to do right now is relax, talk to her, get to know her, and see where it goes from there. But That's my heart already it. belongs to someone else! Well, now you have two girls to make happy. There you go. <laughs> yes. God. Why, why can't you just be Polly like every <laughs> Not Polly. Uh, what's the? No, it's Polly. It yeah, is. It's Polly. Polly, Polly is the one that's just one, right? No, that's no, mono. No, that's mono. Mono. Mon yeah. Monogamous. Just be, just be mono. Yeah, and fine. But it's a little late for that with what you've done. So you're kind of stuck with. What? What? Your girlfriend, the Druid. Both. And them, meanwhile, yeah. Toad woke up with Boxcar Joe. Just, just go be <laughs> Polly then. It'd be fine. <laughs> Probably I had my clothes God on. No! <laughs> God help, God's help, or whatever you believe in. Just go, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carowind's talking with the, the druid, the young druid. It's like, so. Had you fun last night. Oh, I guess Diplo's busy. No, I'm here. No, she 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 she, she, she just nods. It's like ah. Uh, yes, my friend seems to be having some difficulty accepting uh the state of things. It was very cute. <laughs> I can't deny that. Might take him a while to uh accept the responsibility for his decisions. But I suppose if you uh, just work with him. You'll be able to, you know, talk him into it. Pretty thing like you. Do we give her a hand axe as well? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it became so I married an axe murderer. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, and that's how I married an axe murderer. Oh, so the opening of The Shining? <laughs> I just tell him, yeah, yep. Yeah. Luke's just not knowing how to process this. This look, she's waiting for a hero. She got you. <laughs> and yes, I am going to keep on calling you a hero. I need a hero. Oh, he was so wanted to be with How? You wanted to be with who? Wait, what? He said he wanted to be with somebody. It is a princess. What do you mean, the princess? I didn't. Is that the one you said your heart already belonged to? I, 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 uh, so that's a yes. No, like, I, I, how could how could I work out? Like, I'm just a farm boy. Like, <laughs> dude, 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 relax, relax. You may be a farm boy, but you spend time with her and treat her like a person. She like she may like that, and you have a chance. People are still yeah. people. You gotta treat them the way you would want to be treated, like a person. You, you, yes. You this, think so? Yes. Just relax. Remember to to treat her like you how you always do, and don't get nervous. Take, okay, I think uh, that one's out the window. 
I know, but it doesn't hurt to say it may he someday will kick in. Well, I guess, but she's still a princess. And I'm the Queen of England. And I am the judge of the in, court. What the hell's England? Exactly. It's, it's a place where a lot of tea come from. Okay. I don't remember that place in any other maps. It's a very it's tall not listed. It's in my head. It doesn't exist. That's why he's a queen. Exactly. But aren't queen women, though? And? I, I, I trust you, kid. They, they could be male queens. Okay. Just, I, will, I will not take you to the red light district because I'm pretty sure that'll break you. He might like that, though. Uh, who knows? But he's he's too pure for that. That's he's panic He's panicking because he's had a one a drink in one night stand right now. Oh, what am I gonna do now? Like I said, relax, talk with her, get to know her. At the very least, be friends with her. The, la the worst thing you can do is not do anything or treat her badly. I mean, I wouldn't be able to treat anyone badly even if I, even if I tried. Exactly, just there be you yourself. Go. Now, now that you're relaxed, we can get you some water, maybe some this co this stuff called coffee they've been giving out. Now, it really perks you up. I don't like the taste. It tastes like the floor. Uh, uh, just add a little bit of sugar. Or the honey. So, floor sugar? No, thank you. I'm good. He was just Don't so taste. sweet, Miss Carwin. He swept me off my feet and hugged me close. <laughs> and he gave You're me a cute it. nickname based off of the fact that I work with the fertility ones. He started calling me Pyra during it. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn just I, I just, Carolyn just kinda I puts just, a hand on her chin. I, I just it. look so confused, I don't get <laughs> it's oh, like, no. Isn't that the name of that princess he knows? No oh, wait. Hang on. Uh, I don't know. Hey, his uh, people I'm not quite familiar with the people he knows. I uh, I said I, I would have so I know. Don't worry, I mean, the, at worst, you know, she's just made it more difficult for you. At best, you know. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it, Ninkin. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> Axe Lady. Huh. She just wants to ask you a question. And by ask you a question, I mean murder <laughs> you with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, in good news, Boudica has a better strength score than you, Ninkin. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm slowly jealous of you, of you kid. <laughs> Anyways, I'm pretty impressed how just a little bit of liquid courage in him. <laughs> I should but try turns this it from a shy little guy into quite the charmer, it seems. Yeah, I'm... We should get, we should get him drunk more often. <laughs> Quick spices <sighs> coffee. I get, I, I get Luke some coffee mixed in with some sugar or whatever honey to sweeten it a little. Drink <laughs> this. So Carolyn just kind of puts a hand on her shoulder and is like, "Well, that liquid curd seems to have run its course, so perhaps take it easy with him." And just uh, no, let him, just fine. And we'll let him find his uh, come to terms with things on his own, on his own time. But it could be funny to see what he gets into next. <laughs> In so, more ways than one. So Luke, does she have a sister? Uh, who? Uh, your Jewish friend. 
I don't know. I hardly even know her. Uh, so Pyrrha is a princess? Pyrrha is, in fact, one of the three <laughs> princesses of Rivermoot. Ah. She is, in fact, Wait. a princess. She is, you know, you know, third in line for the throne, you know. There's her sister that's older than her, her other sister that's older than her, and the current king, which is her younger brother. <laughs> well, I'm with the king. Uh, he's king. That's, yeah. Uh, he's zeroth in line for the throne, because he's king. Yeah. So, yes, kid, kid, you did well. Yeah. Now, let's go back to meet your druid friend <laughs> and see how this ends. And Palios, his his best friend, is tenth in line for the throne. Oh, I don't get it. It basically means that the royal family dies off. Then it will go through the archduke families, and Palios's dad is number nine in gotcha. the line. I'm so glad I ha I have no responsibility. You do now. Ugh. Still a bit bitter. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Maybe you'll find some cream somewhere. This <laughs> down it? I, I'm just... Leaf's just gonna say... I mean... I think he gave some... Earlier. Huh. Yeah, meanwhile... Uh... Oh, uh, what was her name again? I'll see myself out. Boudica? Boudica? Yeah. Yeah. Boudicca and Carowin are just having a little chat. I I bring back Luke. Where I think uh, Carowin accidentally mentions that Pyrrha might was like someone. Uh, 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 Don't worry, she's not going to bring that up. She's polite. <laughs> she's also still not wearing any clothes. Uh, neither of them are really. She. Carolyn's just got her her tiger skin uh, pelt on. Leaf, is, po Leaf I, I has been look. Leaf has been politely looking away, but he isn't reacting. I I I've just had my pants. Leaf is still fully clothed. Like Luke quickly turns around. Good, no, I'm good. sorry, I'm not looking. Good, that there's some some I'm short. <laughs> Oh, what's the matter, Luke? She comes up and hugs you. <laughs> or are you hurt? Did the mean gnome hurt you? What you do you I did it! But could you please put some clothes back on? No, it's okay. The the gnome hurt him everywhere. <laughs> Why would you do me a little bit? I'm being nice! She puts on her cloak, but not the dress. <laughs> it helps. Everyone just leans down. He's, like, he's shy. Oh, I understand. You know, yeah, the, the civil, civilized <laughs> lands have some reservations about uh, nudity. Yeah. Oh, I. I say you look good. Oh, that's very sweet, Mister Noma. Attacks my Luke. I did not attack him, I gave him some good advice. I can't believe you attacked him. How could you? <laughs> Fine, I'm gonna go lay in front of the wagon and open it in the... Okay, <laughs> see you when you get hit by a wagon. In the middle of a druid encampment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, go, I just go lay, lay in, the, in, the, in our wagon and work on, on a new music box. Every time I'm bad, I'm making a new one. <laughs> I'm up to three right now. Since the troop started. <laughs> All different songs. <laughs> uh, you. Uh, you oh, got don't. something on now. Yeah, yes. she's got her cloak on. Yes, good enough. <laughs> Carowin just says nonchalantly like that's good enough we all do we all <laughs> see it's good enough it covers us to her yes it does I okay. bet you 
<clears throat> Luke turns around again. Uh, she waves. Uh, hello. I'll wave. She hugs you now again. Are you okay? Do you have a fever? Uh, no, no fever. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I always said I was. I was a very resilient guy. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Uh, head. <laughs> but I'm not jealous. <laughs> Box car just kind of winks at you. Oh, go away! Go away! <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do anything. He just used boxcar as a pillow. <laughs> yeah, box boxcar just just fucking with you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> boxcar shows me. happily married. I'll have you know. <laughs> to his beautiful badger wife. <laughs> at, at least she's not she's not badgering him. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> we, we've broken Luke.exe, though. Yeah. Luke, Luke's brain uh, just kind of shorted out. I was like, Wait, I'm going worry. to stand in the wagon. I'm going to motion for him to start talking like a normal person. Just talk. Talk. Hello. Start with hello. He already did. Yeah. <laughs> she, like, she's just stroking his head right now. Like, guess, don't worry, Luke. Don't worry, Luke. I but, know that marriage is a little soon, so, I mean, I've been talking well, we with... we can wait. We can wait a bit. Uh, we can wait a few decades. Give you uh, two some time to... Can he wait really get to know each other. Yes, he could wait oh, that I long. I can feed him some longevity potions to make sure he stays around that long. <laughs> wait, what? I'm gonna go flip uh, what I'm doing. I, I'm really sorry, but... I I don't think I meant a lot of what I said but, uh, last night. Whatever I said. Will you mean it now? You can I roll was... me one D100 roll and then two a persuasion check when you say that. <laughs> this is also I... a good point to use that uh, re-roll you have. Because this is the point where fucking this up could be very, very bad. Please don't murder me with your druid powers, miss. Murder Please don't you. murder me with an axe. <laughs> or druid powers. 62. Restoration now. <laughs> 25. Damn, that's that 20. 20. She she looks at you when you say that. Her eyes well up very, very sadly. I, I'm sorry. Like, I could try. But I can't lie. <laughs> you did. I was so happy to tell my little Abigail that Mommy Grandmama has gotten a new husband. <laughs> like, well, look. Luke, Luke hugs her. I, I'm sorry. I can't, but I can't lie to myself. Uh, crying, right. as she turns into a bird and flies away. Oh. <laughs> uh, Carwin just kind of pinches her brow and is like, "Well, there were better ways to let her down, but to be it's, fair, there were bad. also a lot of worse ways." He was, I'll go. I, I'll go talk to her. I'm gonna come back to Luke. Hold, hold, hold on. How? <laughs> She's you left. Away. I'm concerned. How? Wait, who's how? I'm asking you. How are you going to catch the bird? Oh no, she, she's not going to catch the bird. She's just going to. She's going to go where she flew off and just talk to her. Okay, can you fly? This is still in character. No, she can't. No, this is still in character. But she knows these woods, and she knows most of these druids. 
Yes, but Jim's asking you in character, can you fly? Uh, oh, in character. Yeah, yeah that's what that I've been times. saying. No, I can't. <laughs> she says, I'm a barbarian. <laughs> but I've seen I know these here. woods, and I know most of these druids. I am pretty confident I can find her and talk to her. Do you need help? <laughs> she, <laughs> she looks over to Luke, Luke. Looks back at him and is like, I think you'll be needed here most. <laughs> I am going to go up to Luke. Yes. Well, kid, you fucked up, but you were honest. That's the best, the best you can do. And, well... Uh, but, it, uh, I wouldn't say it was the best he could do. But it, 100%. He's, so, he's socially awkward. If he'd done anything else, <laughs> it could have gone way worse. You mean it didn't? Actually, uh, yeah, I could have. She could turn you in a tree. I'm not sure if she could do to you, G, but she could have turned you in a tree. I mean, she just turned to a bird and flew away, so I mean... Well, honestly, I would think that the worst that could happen was that this one incident would completely dissolve everything that we uh, worked for last night. Yeah, not that bad. <laughs> that, well, that is that the worst Albuquerque? thing that could have happened, and considering that that's not happening... I mean, it still could be a lot worse. Yeah. Well, in any case, I'll... Go concert the guys. girl. She goes <laughs> off to find... Uh, I can't... Can you just make her a character so I can remember her name? She is a character. She, you she just, is a character. Oh, Bodica. There we are. Bodica. 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 Alright. She's gonna go uh, find Bodica. So, about the girl you do like. Uh, yeah? Are you gonna do anything about that anytime soon? Soon? Err, uh, well. She's back at the castle and I'm over here so I don't think so but at that Mail point kid. as you guys are arriving uh, as you're doing that uh, Abigail arrives have any of you seen my grandmother uh depends what do they look like uh, she describes Boudica uh, uh yeah I turned to a bird and flew away oh okay. like Luke just turns pale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you know, I'm no, sure no, no, she'll explain it to you. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'll go catch up with her later. Thank right. you. <laughs> Yay. See you in a bit. See you in like five minutes. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry, Luke. It's just the grandmother of the Archduke's leadership. That's not uh, all Luke, bad. Luke, let's let's get a head start on our travels. <laughs> I don't think we can leave. Um, You're getting you teleported. Know. We can't leave Carwin here. True. Hey, don't worry, Luke. She's only 62 years older than you. You're, you're great, Roger, you. <laughs> but she doesn't look good. Wait, what are you talking about? Luke's practically the cradle robber. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> she's she's only sixty two years older. So I mean, she's practically she's she hasn't even hit her prime yet. Yeah, she hasn't even hit her first century. I blink. <laughs> <laughs> she's still young. I blink again. Especially by <laughs> Druid standards. Uh... <laughs> oh, kid, kid, I, 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 I put a gif in chat. This is, uh, this exactly is his face. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I won't, I won't hate you and love you at the same time. You're like the son I never had. <laughs> Yeah. What kind of a hero put, puts a frown on someone's face? You. Uh, I, a normal human being that 
not a perfect hero. You read too much of those fairy tales. But it's what, but it's what Pyro wants me to be. Which one? Uh, a fairy tale. Like he just draw, draws what, what was dubbed light brand. Oh, there you go. So Pyro's one of those people that sets her expectations so high nobody meets them. Yes. <laughs> and we have a poor, poor sucker right here trying to meet them. <laughs> you got a druid who likes you for you, and a princess that wants you to be better. Actually, hold on. This gift is better. Now you just gotta get both of them in the same room and see what happens. <laughs> oh my god, I've missed 18 messages from various people. Direct PM. Yeah, you know. Shit. Don't worry, Ninkin. I think you'll be doing fine. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, um... I don't... I don't uh, think Pyrus really like that, but... Yeah, Boudica's only 84. <laughs> repeats the gif at the bottom. Wow, Luke really does like him young. It, it, uh, repeats the gif at the bottom. <laughs> I, I just get to look at Luke and say, if if um, Buddha and Pyra ever meet, can I be in the same room and be mediator between you three? I think oh, I will help you survive. Are you sure? Oh, that or I'll get popcorn and watch watch the fight. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we would be caught in the crossfire. Let well, me entertaining so, for the first five minutes. I'll be in the wagon. I mean, if it's the kind of person we think they are, they may attack us for not leading them on the right. Hey, hey I'm trying. Hey, I'm Luke, trying. Luke. You, you, you cradle rob that MILF. How do you feel? <laughs> what does oh, that even mean? Oh, I'm sorry. GILF. Because it's a crib. There you go. Congratulations. I think he's beyond disturbed now. I'm going to keep an eye on Luke. Right. Don't yes. worry. She's, you know, she's got another uh, good thousand years in her. <laughs> As everyone found Luke's Buddha, now yeah. gonna be in the back of the wagon. Just, just pulls out a sketch, <laughs> a sketchbook, and starts drawing. We'll just get our problems away with some happy little trees. <laughs> hey, you know, happy yeah. little accidents. <laughs> but Luke, hey, uh, how could you abandon that lovely half elf? There are no mistakes. It's happy accidents. Exactly. Penny, happy tree. It almost makes me want to try and hit, one, hit on one of the... Fill the, <laughs> the, the sky with some nice fluffy clouds. Boxcar Joe hands you a badger. <laughs> Hi! I give her one of my music boxes. Yeah, for you. You now have a badger. Uh, is it a wicked animal? No, it's a normal badger. Ah. Oh. This is heavy. Do not eat him. And he crawls into the badger's head. They are now friends. It is now the stacked animal chain. There is the hamster, the badger, and the ferret. And I put the ferret on my head so it's a full tone full. Well, it's the badger on your head technically because the ferret's yeah. riding the badger. And the hamster's oh, riding yeah. the ferret. Yes. We must see a fearsome bunch. Then you just need to put the gnome on a normal person's head. It's like a turducken. And then the Power Ranger suit would be complete. No, we, we put me on a normal person's head, then we put that person on a... a centaur. No, I was going to say, oh, uh, good like. No, no, a centaur is funnier, because when you put them on a centaur, 
you can then put them on a centaur on another centaur. So you have this two centaurs forming the legs and that person forming the body, you forming the head. Oh. Uh, works. Yeah. Uh, Luke, as you're processing what just happened, uh, your first time, uh, a beautiful maiden. It was his first time, that lucky dog. Doesn't he feel lucky? Not entirely. Why not? <laughs> by, I mean, by biological standards, uh, you could very well argue that she's, uh, by half a standard, she's still actually only in her 20s. She's My first to, time. She's barely in her twenties. About that, to be fair. Yeah, my first time was with my ex-wife. That's normal. Yeah. <laughs> and to be clear, it happened after she became his ex-wife. No, that's in, that's incorrect. No, it was when you started dating, and she wanted kids. I tried. When they started dating when they were 15. She that wasn't was kids. Yeah. You know, that is their first mistake. Of many. Many. <laughs> many. 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 She was, a, she, she was lawful. I was a thief. I was... <sighs> I was saying my days st stealing and making sure to get her some nice things. She was training to be a guard. Yep, and you guys will get teleported uh, about midday. So, yeah, that's... <laughs> As you guys are dealing with all of that, you know. Yay! You guys made friends. Did, um... And enemies. <laughs> uh, you didn't make an enemy, you just broke someone's heart. You broke Does that, that make poor, it better? You broke that poor maiden's heart. Can her, I go her, and go her and daughter is gonna beat the shit out of you, Luke. The only thing I don't I think the curb your enthusiasm thing would be better here. I think Luke can hope for at this point is is if that little one night's dead didn't cause a thing. Yes. Can I, well, you, can don't I wanna, you don't want to give Abigail an aunt? <laughs> oh my god. Can, can I make friends with Boo? With, um, what I no, she's not there right now. She's, she, she, she's sulking, sadly. Uh, almost like... Uh, a teenager? Uh, yeah, almost like, you know, she is a half elf and thus a teenager still. Uh, oh, uh, you can make me a D100 roll also, Luke. Oh, D100? Yeah, it, the first D100 was basically to give me a rough approximation of how much older she was than you. Uh. I repeat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. 58. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, and then roll me a, a d20. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, and then roll me a d uh, four. One. Interesting. Interesting. Can I become pen pals with Buddha? Uh, no, you can't. Don't worry. Uh, I want. I want. I want to make friends with her. She. She's still too busy grieving over her lost love, Luke. Oh, has Carolyn found her yet? She's oh. a bird. 
She, she's, she's one faster than you and two a bird. It's going to be pretty hard to find. Yeah, and three she wants to be left alone. Th th those, those three aspects together mean that even though you know the forest, you know, it's a bird in the forest. All right, well, then she's just going to consult uh, Abigail as to where her grandmother might be. Uh, Abigail will say, uh, if she doesn't want to be found, then just let her be alone. Uh, <sighs> she, she just needs some time, especially from what I've heard that Luke broke her heart. Yes, it's all his fault. Agreed. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to break something of his. Uh, I would have advised to get stuck. It's not real. It's he. Uh, he ingested way too much alcohol. Oh no, I understand. I, I just, I'm just making a joke about yeah. computer <laughs> justice. The point is, okay. it's, it's fine. It's fine. We all have those moments of weakness. Yes, he's he's a good boy. Is he? Uh, mm, he that kind of went out the window last night. He, yeah, he used to be a good boy. He is a good boy. He tried to avoid conflict, then he got he stabbed was. for it. He was a good boy. And <laughs> then he got fucked up. <laughs> then he got <gone> fucked up. <laughs> like a normal human being. Then he got gone fucked up. <laughs> yes, uh, poor Luke is suffering from some unrequited love from a a princess of his, I think. Oh, you're all from Rivermoot, aren't you? Yes. I don't know. Well, my friend is. Yes, though that's what I meant. I know you're from here, Carwin. She's kind of. <laughs> hold fast in Arcadia, because we're close to hold fast in your family. Mostly those over there. Uh, yes. Oh. Mm. Well, that's I'll very interesting. Uh, that must be I'll a very interesting romance. Yes, I'll do my best to help him uh, through it and put him on the right track. That's yeah, interesting enough that he should, uh... Hmm. He makes an interesting drunk. I shall have to make sure he does not drink anymore. Yeah, well, any more than last us. night, anyways. One should be enough. But then we switch him to water. Or we can just... Phil is, uh, you know, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Just don't let him get booze. <laughs> like, that, that, that's all you need to do is not let him get booze because he doesn't seem to be able to hold his liquor. Yeah, I'm gonna treat, I'm gonna start treating Luke as my little brother. You know, he's bigger than me. What? Hey, look, how old is a character? Actually, though, that's a good question. Who wins in a drinking contest between Luke and Toen? Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> I, I'm willing to roll. Well, it probably uh, won't be Luke or uh, Towen. The answer is Luke's got the advantage because he's got one more in this in his con mod. So he's got the advantage. Uh, he's also got size. That too. I mean, if one of you was a Yon T, it would be over because they are resistant to all poison and get an so advantage. Sorry, dwarves. Of Yep. Uh, dwarf versus Goliath. Who would win a drinking contest? Is it, is it Goliath? Uh, well, that's a hard one. I mean... Halfling versus Goliath would also be interesting. Because they get the same uh, advantage on poison saves. Ah. Uh. Yeah, halflings are actually really good at drinking. <laughs> I'm not I'm this tiny and then once he gets drunk you can pick him up and cuddle him please don't pick me up and cuddle me <laughs> <laughs> I'm a very affectionate drunk Luke is actually very good at drawing because well Palios only taught him the basics Luke kept drawing as for as a pastime. That's good. Pelios, hey, so, Pelios, meanwhile, back at the camp, organizing the diplomats and having to deal with the nobles. 
is just going, oh, where is everybody? Because it's been two weeks. And it's like, oh, work, work. And then you guys all <laughs> teleport in when he's coming back to camp. Oh, oh okay. Shrugs. Okay, and works. Luke <laughs> makes up drawing for. as a consequence of breaking young maiden's hearts. And look how many drawings she does. Although, if you were to sneak a peek, you've, you've never actually seen him drawing, uh, drawing Pyra. Are they uh, all how Pyra? much of it is not safe for work, Luke? Huh? How much of it's not safe for work, Luke? None of it, actually. Oh, my. It's he... a, it's a... Oh, so he's a hopeless romantic. Yes, he is. How old is Luke? He should be around his 20s. Yeah. You are way too young to be a hopeless romantic. I'm tw in my 20s too, so I'm about the same age. I'm still going to treat you as my little brother. <laughs> You're a gnome. I don't care. He's a gnome brother because he's too precious. You can live okay. up to 500 years. You're going to outlive him by a long shot. I'm, I grow the patch. I know, I'm just saying, like, that's the point, is that's why you can yeah. view him as a little brother. Because yeah. by when you're physically in your 80s, you're going to be 360. He'll be, uh. you know, 80. Uh. Uh, in his 80s. You'll still be relatively the same. Oh, what's Goliath lifespan in the setting? Uh, Goliaths? Yes. Uh, that is actually highly dependent on... Uh, combination of region and other things, but they get uh, All right, well, human and uh, twice human. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're also uh, in a relationship with an Azamar, which helps out because an Azamar's lifespan extends to their loved one. Oh. So your lifespan is either A, going to be more comparable to your wife's, which hers is going to be in the thousands. Or you're just going to get like a multiplier of ten and live to be like two thousand. Oh, yeah. You your lifespan is uh, question mark basically. You know what <laughs> it, it should be between one hundred and two hundred, and then multiply in because one hundred to two hundred wife bonus, and you like I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll go with question mark. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try to keep Luke on the right path and have him mature a bit. Oh my god. That means that that uh, Carowin could be in the portal while everyone else is doing their business and they could go back in there and she'd still be there. Yeah, but Just that would not way be older. A, Yeah, that would not be a good choice. Mostly because <laughs> that would that would be a good way to figure out exactly what your lifespan is, if you stayed on <laughs> your side of the portal. Hold on one moment. Yeah, turns out yeah, you know, turns out it's only a multiplier of times two. We've been gone. Excuse me, we've been gone two weeks. You're now you're now ancient and old. You got decrepit hair. Hello, <laughs> Sunny Jims. It's me, Carwin. What what happened to you? It's been five hundred years. Oh, let me pinch your cheeks, Toad. <laughs> I would I would talk for about four hours. How did you all inch that grass? Four hours would be four years. Uh, so right. That would still be a long time. Oh, that that'd be funny. Like the older she gets. The the more her hum her human side of her genes works out of her system, and she just becomes more giant, and she just starts getting bigger and bigger as she gets older. Oh, look at you, pinch his cheeks with knuckle thick <laughs> knuckles. Oh, uh, I'm dying. Oh, my HP is going low. <laughs> She's picking you up and almost ripping your cheek off. Uh... <laughs> I hate to say it, but I am the comic relief in this in Luke's story. <laughs> You're the comic relief in every story. Let's be real. I mean, hey, you know for a fact <laughs> that you know if you if Toad had been left behind in the portal, uh, he'd be an old man now. Yeah. 
because you would take Toen's current age of 24 and add in 408 more years. And that's if he survived all the murder and death and bloodshed. I'm so glad he's on nice. No, Toen, you, your character. Oh, if you oh, were a portal nice. side, yeah, you you'd be you'd be 432. You'd be ancient. <laughs> Toen, Toen, how long's it been? What? What yeah? happened? Oh yeah, while you, while you guys were gone, there was like 600 riots. I in the took first part. Year. I took part in them all. <laughs> <laughs> I picked so many pockets. Can they I didn't even... have anything because they didn't have pockets. They just no. had animal bones. I don't even know. like, why the hell are you guys carrying around animal bones? And they're like, well, you you know, you never know when you need them. And I'm like, man, that ain't doing me no good. Why are you carrying around animal bones? Yeah, well, what happened to all the silver and spoons and stuff? Like, why don't you have that? And they're like, man, we don't need that. Uh, on the plus side, you guys could just, you know, put Luke in for a day and he'll come out as an older man. So you can then have him <laughs> rethink his life choices. <laughs> I think he should do that while he's young. <laughs> That was the joke. Put him yeah. in for a day, he comes out, now he's 44. Introduce him to the druid again. <laughs> I get give it about two weeks before I send a letter. Yeah, they're just standing right there in front of the portal. Karen was just like, polyamory, consider it, then pushes him in. And <laughs> <laughs> then just like stands I, I... by for an hour and is like, all right, he should be good to go. <laughs> I'll get him. Well, polyamory is sometimes the solution, just like harems and other things. It is not always the solution. Luke, Luke, Wait, Luke just has the problem that he's 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 starting to develop his love triangle. As a tr as a true hero, everybody knows true heroes have love triangles. Because, as we know, the most important part of any fantasy epic is the love triangle. <laughs> yes, the love triangle. <laughs> this was it's like you got you got Pyra, uh, Bodica, and Luke. Luke. Between the the one for Bodica to Luke is a solid arrow, a solid line from Bodica to Luke. It's like a dotted line from Luke to Bodica. A dotted yeah, line mean, from Luke to Pyrrha. No, a solid line from Luke to Pyrrha. Dotted line from Pyrrha to Luke. And it's just solid lines between Pyrrha and Vodica. It's like, what's going on? It's like, well, you know, you couldn't figure things out, so we decided to work things out. The Archie, I was going to point, like... point out that the next addition to Luke's love triangle is Glenway's. And... Well, uh, and then Auntie Orla. Then Orlo. it becomes a, tri a triangle of pyramid. Then it becomes a square, a square pyramid. Well, it's Luke at the center. Then it's Auntie Orla in the top right. Uh, Glenway's <laughs> oh in the top God. left. <laughs> You're in the bottom he, right. Uh, Boudicca in the bottom he, left. He, he tries to get him with my ass. I'm stabbing him. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to know he's... Don't you want to get with Glenway's? Oh, good God. <laughs> oh, God, that's scary. <laughs> she's a Goliath barbarian as well. There's a reason why she's Carewin's rival. That's, that's scary. That's something in my nightmares. <laughs> oh, come on. What's a little death by Snoo Snoo? She's also the daughter of the of Lindstrid, the master of the uh, cutting the goats open. Holy crap. Oh, shit. Yes, let's not forget that that guy is also a Goliath. I got a question. Is she Thank going to God. be a teacher? Thank God she Luke could be. Her. If you wanted her to be. I can't okay. wait to introduce her to Thank Luke. Thank God Luke didn't meet her. <laughs> I mean, you did, technically, during the drunken rampage. You just don't remember anything with her. Nor do you oh, know God, if you did anything no. with her. 
Uh, next thing you know it, she comes right the next day. Oh no. <laughs> hey there, little man. You wanna go for another round? Luke, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think at that point Luke would be running. <laughs> to be so small and squishy, you sure do hit all the right places. Oh god, stop. Okay, uh, <laughs> so we're, we're ending the session, but before we end the session, I want to note, uh, they need the bones and they need the skin for the reincarnation ritual. So, they specifically have animals, i.e. goats, that they keep alive Well, goat meat is good on them. And they basically do the whole uh, reincarnate thing on them. Bringing them back as goats again and again for feasts. That way they don't need to hunt or overextend things. Because, yeah. They just take the bones, they wrap the skin up around the bones, and then, you know, pop comes uh, the goat uh, with all the memories. Of mm -hmm. being slaughtered? Uh... Not really, but you know. I mean, this isn't all of them, but you know. Uh, yeah, it's based on the thing that Thor did with his goats in actual uh, Norse mythology. Yeah. Yeah. Thor had his goats and he would eat them sometimes. And then bring them back from the dead. Uh, so, I gotta keep, make sure Luke, Luke never touches alcohol again. Yeah, Luke is banned from alcohol. Uh, he's gonna need to drink I'm at parties. We'll we'll give him water. Yes. Hey, water I or mead. I'll I'm sneak gonna, in if I have to. Actually, I don't think you guys really need to worry. He's going to probably be way too paranoid of alcohol to even touch any anyway. <laughs> hey, Last Luke, time do you want to try some drink. spice? What? Do you want to try some spice, Luke? Some spice. Uh, yeah, spice. Spice. No. Come on, come on, sort some spice with us. Uh, it's no. candy for your nose. No, I think I'm fine, thank you. He's, oh, come he's, on. He's it's a digital walker. It's only slightly got the risk of turning you into a giant sandworm. I bet he runs. <laughs> I'm going to join him. You can't outrun fate, Luke. You can't <laughs> outrun fate. Snoo, snoo. <laughs> Don't worry. I mean, when Glenwee shows up at the uh, portal going ceremony, you know, that's when Luke will recognize her. Or she'll <laughs> recognize him. Or vice versa. And then we'll establish what happened with him and her. Oh, good God. Don't worry. What's the worst that it could have been? <laughs> I can't wait. Oh I'll make God. sure to stay right by him. What's the worst that could have happened? Oh, in his drunken, drunken stupor, he he broke out into tears, explain, you know, telling his life story and explaining everything to Pira about Pira to Glenwis. And she's like, I'm going to make, I'm going to get this man his dream girl. <laughs> so Glenwis becomes his his uh, wing Goliath. I was gonna say that she decides to become his dream girl. <laughs> You're a hero now! Picks up. <laughs> hero! <laughs> She's really for a hero! <laughs> I don't think that's how it works! <laughs> You don't need, you don't need Pira. Not when you've got these. She rubs, just rubs your face against her rock hard abs. Exactly. I mean, Pira has rock hard abs too. It's just, <laughs> just, just cuts to Luke's confused sounds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, then, and then, and then the fifth contestant for the love triangle enters. Because we've got Glenwees, we've got Boudica, we've got Auntie Orla. No! I'm <laughs> stabbing him! And then the fifth <laughs> contestant enters, it's Pelios. Uh, he's not gay. I mean, yes, Luke's not gay, we know. 
But that doesn't mean Paleos isn't. Oh god, no. Please don't. <laughs> uh, hey, Luke. That's why he follows him. It makes sense. No, and, no. Then, and then, and then no. enters the sixth contestant. <laughs> hey, guys. My name's Betty. Oh, God. <laughs> No, 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 the sixth contestant is clearly the one that's going to get him killed by <laughs> Carwin, and that's obviously Ramilia. <laughs> Ramilla. Yeah, Ramilla. Or, better yet, ah, it is nice to meet you. I am out bed. Hello, hello. You are now hug you know, number nine, a dwarf by the name of Abed. This is good. I trade you. At least it's not my ex-wife. Number ten. Towen. <laughs> no! I don't understand how this happened. Why? Towen, I've... you've been given a love potion. Why? <laughs> Number eleven. Towen's ex-wife. <laughs> I, 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 uh, <laughs> I, I give my ex-wife the love potion. Yeah. You've already I'm, been affected I'm, I'm by just it. I'm gonna suspect that his that the freaking light brand has something to do with it. Number thirteen, light brand. <laughs> Senpai, <laughs> notice me. <laughs> Who is light brand? I was gonna be too disturbed to even use that thing. <laughs> light brand turns into fee. There is a seventy-six percent chance that I love you. <laughs> Well, what about the other 24 percent chance? <laughs> I just want to cut you in half to taste your blood. <laughs> good luck, good luck, Luke. I'm out. I cannot save you from this madness. <laughs> Number 14, Towen's new girlfriend. I have a new girlfriend. <laughs> Number 15, <laughs> Win, the frozen aunt of Jib. <laughs> Number 16, <laughs> the gay cannibal. Uh oh. That that that's that's Jib's cousin. Number 17, Boxcar Joe. He's not actually interested in you. He just thinks it's funny to fuck with you. No, no, no. No, Boxcar Joe just clearly wants you to marry one of his kids. <laughs> oh god, no. Number 18. <laughs> that's bestiality. That's you. You're assuming they can always turn the kid into a normal person with animal ears and a tail. Oh God! No. Number nineteen, Loena, i.e. Inquisitor's wife. <laughs> oh, the Inquisitor would kill me. That's the point. <laughs> and then finally, number twenty, the Overseer. I thought she's dead. I mean, you hope. Uh, she you, don't, <laughs> you don't know how she works. She, <laughs> she is. That's not stopping her. <laughs> she, um, <laughs> she's also a literally epic level blood mage who's Alexander the Great, a coup, without the use of spoken language. Yeah, an undead overseer, all moldy and rotten, just like, Luke! Number, Luke. 20, number 21, the last remaining overseer. Sorry, the last remaining master. <laughs> just yeah, the what's minutes. the name of our friend? The one that gave me the necklace? Uh, the one that gave you the necklace? Yeah. Here. There you go. Bryn. How, I'm asking how do you pronounce that? Bryn. Bryn? Bryn? Yeah. Yeah, Bryn. Number, t number 22, Bryn. No, Bryn's not into him. Yay! At least he has standards. <laughs> <laughs> number 23, Carwin's son. Wow, you got 23, let me dress. This is a long series. Oh, number... Well, no, obviously it's just no... Also, number 25, your patron. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean the magical one. Number 26, 
the daughter of the guy that you destroyed the ceramic toilet bowl collection of. <laughs> Wait, he had a daughter? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. She wants to take you for destroying his her father's collection. She wants to marry you for that because she's so proud of you for destroying it finally. Even Num though it was an accident. Number 26 plus, Carewin's tribe. You have become legendary. No, 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 that no, no, no that's silly. It has to be a single individual. Clearly it's Carewin's mother. <laughs> mm. no. He's a legend. The, the bard sing about his prowess. How he can sw sway any woman to fall in love Number with him. Number 28, the king of Rivermoot. Oh, God, no. <laughs> the running joke is that you're going to have so many people fall in love with you <laughs> just because you're so indifferent. <laughs> yeah. Leaf is... No, no, not Leaf. Uh, Luke is just generally a nice guy. Number 30. Inquisitor's other love interest, Adriana. Oh. The elf. I know. The one that Inquisitor is wanting to do stuff with, but he can't. Oh, actually, he can, but yeah. Uh, who's messaging me? Luke, you can. I'll, I'll tell you this. You can have my ex wife. I don't want her. <laughs> I don't want her. You can have her. She's too fat for me. She's not that fat. She's lovely. <laughs> The fact that Toen can say such nice things about his ex-wife just shows how good a guy he is. Their relationship is still very much about love. They care about each other deeply, passionately, and with the same burning intensity as when they were newlyweds. She just can't deal with the fact that he's a thief. That yeah. was the deal breaker. And Who that's, knew? And that's why she has a warhammer with his name on it. Hey, I gave her that Warhammer. I paid for it. Paid. Quote, unquote. <laughs> hey, hey, it was with stolen money, but I still paid. You're not the one that engraved it, though. No, I did not. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. So next next week you guys get to see what lies ahead for you on the other side of the portal. Uh, the big thing is the druids took a bunch of time, and if mm -hmm. you guys hadn't gotten all the druid groups to agree, they wouldn't have willingly teleported to you. So you guys would have had to take another two weeks getting back. Thus, that was their biggest thing. Is you know it takes a long time to get there. Uh, I'm. I'm glad I got the builders to work with us. Yeah, basically, yeah, you just got unlucky. But it also led to a really funny thing, because if, if your speech hadn't been as good to her, your role would have really fucked you. And then, yeah. and then you would have been in trouble. I just got to bury the seed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Giggity. You know, <laughs> just like Luke did. Yeah, you just gotta bury the seed. You didn't mind I got us an actual seed. Yep. I'm not I'm not Luke, and not everything's about sex. <laughs> yeah. No, but you are going to be solely responsible for where the druid's new building gets set up. Well, I'm, gonna ha I'm gonna have you help me. <laughs> no, no, it's your sole responsibility. Yep. It's all okay. you. I, I can't... Carewin says she but... can't help you. You accepted the deal. It's your responsibility. But I need advice. Find... <laughs> you can't... Just... Uh, does this... Carewin just, Carewin just holds up her hands like, Sorry, no, you're the one that made the deal. You have to fulfill your end of the bargain. The yeah. books are mm. like, to put me in the right direction. 
<laughs> she just holds up her hands. Can't help you. I was I'll not bite, part of that agreement. I'll bite the book off you. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't about money, it's about principle. You made the deal. You have to fulfill it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're 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 the one that's doing the work. You... Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm doing the work, but I'm also doing research, so I know where <laughs> to put the the tree in the uh, ideal spot. Gets <laughs> enough water, gets enough sun. <laughs> Carolyn just says that's for you to decide. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to the library next to her, next next uh, session. There's no library nearby. There's the, <laughs> the, there's the Lord's libraries, but you would need permission from them to get into it. I can always just break in. This is this is uh, a good plan. No, it's not. I have one of the the ambassadors <laughs> to come with me. Yeah, yeah. I just, like, just find it funny. So, so what, so what were the me? roles for? Oh, just to see if you may have left her a present. For nine months from now. Oh God! Did he? Did he go on? Uh, considering the amount of rolls I had to do, I think so. Don't worry, Luke. What's the worst it's, that could happen? It's, it's not triplets. Like, oh no, it's not triplets. It's only twins. Quadruplets. Only twins. Yeah, okay. It was a D four plus one. He only got two. Uh, okay. Congratulations! I can I be the uncle? <laughs> you mean the Godfather? Sure. Oh my God! Luke's gonna have a very. <laughs> it cuts to Luke just screaming when he realizes what happens when he gets a sending message of her with the kids. <laughs> really, what's going on? Be really surprised. <laughs> A few months from now. One, just, she's a druid. Did you expect her not to be able to do that? Two, magic. Three, yeah. Hey, who says it's going to be a few months? Maybe it's a few weeks. I oh, just, God. I look at Luke when he gets the letter. See the shocked face that he's thinking says, So, should we go visit your kids? I mean, that's not for a while. You don't have to worry about that. But, you know, it'll be fun. I mean... No, it'll, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Maybe not for Luke. <laughs> and everyone yeah. has kids now. I have none. Everyone important has kids now. Fuck you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I need to rephrase it. Don't worry, Toen. <laughs> uh, you're the comedy relief character, so when you die at the end and everyone's trying not to celebrate your death, you know, you'll get brought back. Uh... <laughs> Tolan's to death surprised Pikachu. I am... I am... I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, you had the same chance as everybody else. You know, and Ninkin had uh, initially in his second backstory like 21 kids. Yep, so we're changing that. <laughs> you want to get those kids, boy. One way or another. Hey, hey. It's entirely technically possible based on how those mechanics work that like just keeping in mind your character's age like like Carwin if she had had yeah. a romance earlier it would uh, you know you could have had a kid per year so Carwin could have had a dozen kids at this point because <laughs> uh, that, that's the earliest point possible and based on Carwin's age yeah but Ninkin as a guy can get around that. Yay! Woo! Everybody wins. Don't worry, Toen. You got a beautiful girlfriend waiting for you. I'm worried. Beautiful girlfriend. You did, every 
the more emphasis you put on it, the more worried I get. Don't worry, she's beautiful. She's got that perfect handlebar mustache that you crave. Fuck you. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, I mean, what, what's the worst that could happen? You I get stabbed in my sleep. I mean, mm, that seems very personal. I really didn't expect <laughs> Luke to go down so easy. <laughs> he got drunk and wow, shit. Wow. <laughs> it's very, I'm still very glad that you saved that inspiration because if you hadn't and you'd failed one of those persuasion checks, it would have been all for naught. Getting drunk was worth it, especially considering what's happened now. Yeah. Oh boy. We have a new story beat and a new character. Yeah. So, okay, we got water. Don't worry. Hey, book, here, look. Your adorable potential love interest. Okay, then. That makes me less worried. Well, I mean, why would you be worried? I, I mean, last time I, you said I have a beautiful girlfriend waiting for me with a dog. And was the dog not beautiful? Uh, I don't remember. I was just disappointed that it was a dog. Sounds to me like you were judging what her favorite animal form is. You do have a point that I, I should I should be more considerate. There we go. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> this, no. I gotta stop going with everything I say. No no that that that's one of the key hallmarks of good role playing is going with what others say. You know, it's what makes fate so great is that you can just be like, you yeah, know, I do this stupid thing because it's in character and you get a fate point. In fact, Red Market does the same thing with Will. Uh, that's how you get Will, by doing stupid shit that follows one of your your spots. Oh yeah, what's, what is my tiggy? What? Uh, my ideal and stuff. Did you not fill it out? I did, but I forget what it is. Honor, I don't steal from others in the trade. All right, I don't steal from other thieves. Oh, my characters, I'm committed to my crewmates, not to ideals. Yay. Oh, my ill get, my ill gotten, my ill gotten get, gain goes to support my family, which is my aunt and my ex-wife. Which reminds me, I need to send them some money from that, that guy sold. Yeah, I can't wait until we go to a bar. For me or for Luke? No, because uh, my character's personality traits, a tavern brawl, is a good way to get to know a new city. <laughs> We're going to have a fight. Yay. 